Welcome back, everyone. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shoma and Nick Taylor from Come On Now, the podcast. As I just said, I am Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I am here to make you smile. And Nick is here to drive me crazy. We are up to 838 subscribers. Thank you so much for your continued support. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Instagram. Facebook and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast and at what the hell's the other one? X Twitter. Come on now. The Come On Now Pod. And we have an announcement. We have added a Patreon page. So subscribe to that Patreon page where we're gonna do exclusive content that cannot be seen here on YouTube or Instagram. It'll be specifically only on Patreon. So jump on board on the Patreon Patreon page. It's five dollars a month. Give us a shot. Be stuff that we can't post here because YouTube has some some rules that kind of suck. So, Nick, introduce yourself. Nick Taylor, former CFL player, former AFL player, former NFL player, Division One basketball player, self-proclaimed once upon a time fastest man in the world. Rudy's probably has a problem with that, and he's probably going to say some shit about that today because we argued about that this week, guys. So um, I am here, baby. I said Division One basketball player. Yeah, I did that. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Get a little closer to the mic, Nick. You're echoing a little bit. Okay, 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 okay. You can't, you can't sit that far back. Damn, I was yeah, he, got, he got a nice pretty mic, and he thinks he can sit across the room to, to, for us My to hear. guys. Because y'all, y'all got on me last time, <clears throat> Situation. So, yeah, we apologize for the technical difficulties last week. I mean, when it recorded, it sounded fine. But then when we uploaded it, now all of a sudden it has some snap, snap, crackle, and pop on it. And, you know, so we apologize it for happens. that. It happens. By the way, Donald's not with us tonight. He is flying fired. across across the country. Fired. Making deals. Okay. Fired. We fired him, guys. We fired him already? No, no. We're man. bringing He's in making- Molly. He, oh God, God! Kevin no, we, 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 we could bring in Ryan Clark. Cut it out. Hey, I, was, I love I love Ryan Clark as an as as an analyst, uh, moderator. It's a tough job, man. I hate doing this. I'd rather have Donald here doing this shit because I like to be the one that just talks and he can lead the way. He, he's good at it. I have to find a way to lead the way and then be involved and then not talk too damn much as I'm doing right this moment. So we're gonna jump in right now. Okay. I don't give a shit about the NBA draft that's going on. What draft? Do not care. The NBA draft, which is tonight. There's a draft. Okay. And three of the top six picks are from France, so no one knows who the hell they are. Wee, wee, wee. It's whether they say they do or not. No one knows. Nope. And then, um, yeah, so we have uh, the NBA contracts. Have you seen today the NBA contracts that have been given away to role players? Yeah. I am going to get on this real quick. OG, okay, we have three things that popped off today in the NBA that are of note. OG Ananobi signs a five-year, $212 million deal. Yes, sir. Bam Adebayo signs a three-year, $165 million extension. And then the deal of all deals, the Brooklyn Nets traded Mikel Bridges to the New York Knicks, so he has to drive across the bridge now, for I think four or five first-round picks. So now we have the New York Wildcats featuring Jalen Brunson, yes. Dante DiVincenzo, yep. Josh Hart, Yep. And Mikel Bridges, yep. a team that it's eight years ago, and I give him grace because I no one at that time thought for shit that these guys were pros. Stephen A. Smith said, none of these guys are pro prospects. And now, and they now they're all and now they're all playing for his favorite team. Orange and, and blue skies. Huh? Orange, and, orange and blue skies. Orange and blue skies. And he is celebrating that shit, I'm sure. But yes, he is. Let's start with that one. What do you think about the New York Knicks having a team of Villanovians. Well, one all Villanova players, but is this not like you know how they talk about the big three and whatever the heck? Which this is like 
the role player all star team. The New York Knicks. The New York Knicks are the role player all star team. You think Mikael Bridges is a role player? He was a role player initially. You think he is a role player? He was with the Suns. That's not the question. He was moved. He wasn't with the the, the Nets because they stunk. Okay, so you're trying to say that him with better players around, he'll become a role player again. He. he I mean, he's the number two option now, but the Knicks, he's not the oh, number one. He's, he's over Randall? One. Oh, shit. I forgot about Randall. He's the three option. Yeah. So, and, and a lot of people think that Randall's a role player. No, no, no. No one thinks he's a star. No, he's not a superstar, but he's a... he's a. No one thinks he's a star. Nah, eh, fringe star. No, you added Mikael Bridges. Does Mikael Bridges make the New York Knicks a, 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 a NBA Finals... Champion contender. He, he 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 gets them closer. I don't know what's gonna happen because just like happened this year, injuries happen. One thing we know about Mikael Bridges, he plays every game. Now if he gets hurt this year, goddamn Tom Thibodeau, it'll be Tom. It'll be Tom fault because he may not get hurt any time else. And if he get hurt under Tom, watch where Tom is known for running players in the ground. <sighs> We kind of got to look at. We kind of got to go to Tom practices, but he's a he's a warrior. He's going to be there every night. He played eighty three games one a year. The man is going to show up. He likes to play basketball. Those are the type of players you need. You know he can get you twenty a night. He showed that before. You know he could lead a team. He showed that before. So now he's coming in to be the third option. That's a perfect role. That's where you want LeBron James to be. So if you want LeBron James to be there, I think Mikael Bridges is the perfect third option for the roster. For a winning team, I think he's 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 good enough to be the third option on a championship team. Now, who else do you have on that team? You have to have a complete team in this NBA nowadays. You can't just come out there with three top players and not have a full roster. They got OG at OG back. They they got Hart, um, you know, and then they will fill out the rest of their roster. Hopefully, they can keep Hart and Stein. You got the other big man come back, Mitchell, um, and then maybe you add a guard who could back up Brunson. Because you don't want to run Brunson in the ground. Um, Brunson does so much for that team. And this is the reason that they that they are able to give this laughable contract to, to OG. Because the other laughable contract is Brunson. Because he's considerably underpaid. So since he's so underpaid, Mikael Bridges doesn't get paid that much also, I believe. Like, like, not like, I don't think he gets like the 45, 50. So they're able to fill out their roster pretty nicely they're able to give og that money and that's a laughable contract but to fulfill to fill out to fill out the roster huh, i'm not mad at it so there'll be a team that will be competing for to go into the championship because all it all it depends on is can your team go to the playoffs healthy can y'all last in the playoffs healthy and can you be okay if one of your good players get hurt for a couple of games can you make it and you have to have a Able bodies in there, and they had that, and I'm not mad at that. Huh? Hey, go New York, man. Good move today, man. I'm I'm on y'all side today for the first time since 1998, when me and Latrell Sprewell was best friends. So yeah, he has a very friendly contract. Yeah, um, at, at 23 million this year. 20 and then you and then you put Jalen four nine next Jaylen year. Friend, Jalen friendly contract. That's why you're able to. That's mm-hmm. why you're able to build this roster like this. That's why but, NBA contract you could get away with it, even though he shouldn't be paid that much. But that's what the new NBA is, man. These players just getting deals out of nowhere. Where I'm not gonna go into their pockets, but damn it, we kind of this isn't going about going into anyone's pockets. This is about being real about like you know. being real about what's happening to these professional sports. Yeah, like you're, they're not paying this marginal soccer players in Europe. Yeah. It's fifty million a year. They're paying or a hundred million a year. They're paying the elite best of the best players on the planet. Yeah. Not in the not in the league. Yeah. On the planet. Like the guys getting paid that ridiculous Ronaldo, Messi, exactly. Mbappe money are Ronaldo, Messi, and Mbappe. And that's they're not what... paying Jim Smith. No. Who's the you know a, a role player? midfielder yeah so 100 million dollars yeah so I, I was gonna bring that up so how do you know who's a star in this league anymore because it's supposed to be going by what your compensation <clears throat> the pay is but 
you have the third best player on certain teams making more than the first best player. And that's just ridiculous. So the pay scale is all screwed up. Some people just got screwed because Jalen Brunson took that contract because of where he was at that point in his career. But now you look at that roster, you, and, and he look at his check, and he, he, he's sitting next to OG, and OG opens his pay stuff. He's like, damn. You know, I, I when I look at the, the roster for the Knicks, look, I was actually – who did they lose to again? Indiana. I was cheering for them. I wanted them to be Indiana, and, and I wanted to see them play against the Celtics full strength. And we didn't get that, so we got a wipeout in the Eastern, in the Eastern Conference Finals. The even though they were close games, it was four zero. Four zero is four zero. We gotta stop with this. Oh, close, a close, a close sweep. sweep. A no, close. you you got swept. It's a close. There's nothing sweep. Nothing close about being swept. Yeah. The rea- there's nothing in the world that will ever be close about losing four straight games. I do not okay, care. Okay. How you want to phrase okay, it? Really, you yeah. lost four straight Listen. times. <laughs> okay, okay. What's better? So, say you won two games by a couple points, but you lost the other four by thirty-three points, and then That's the other team far. got I swept. I won two games. What? Look, <laughs> the other team look, got look, swept. Look, look, look at look look at. I mean, shit. Look at the look at the Celtics uh, and the Mavericks. I'll take the two wins. You're right. But I'm just the saying. Celtics, the Celtics, lost, there was no there was one close game in that entire series or two like the two, blowouts two. primarily. Two games. Two. There were two one really one close game. They came one back, was a seven they? point game. You had blowout in game one, blowout in game four, blowout in game five. You think the Mavericks care that they won one game by thirty if they could have won three more by two and won the series four three? <laughs> I said that. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I, like we got to stop this. Clo- this. This only – we know where this came from. Oh, the LeBron? Cause this the- was created based on last year, Denver Nuggets, the Los Angeles Lakers, and the Laker fans <laughs> and LeBron fans yelling about, oh, it was a competitive sweep. It was. So- it was us. Their series this year was more competitive. No, it is it's a sweep, but what it if... It doesn't matter. They two, got swept. If I'm two or three plays away from being up 3-1 instead of down 4-0, is that not competitive? It wasn't like we had no... No, because you lost every one no, of those games. The end result is the end result. It's a, the, the competitive, a competitive game is but, a competitive game. But uh, if you lose each game... There's nothing competitive about losing 4-0. But if nothing. you but if you look in object objectivity, yeah, you I, would rather be swept. You okay, let's let's, no, let's I'm not saying you I would, would rather you would rather okay, okay. No, no. You would rather No. No. Lo, you would would you rather lose 4 games by 30 and win 3 by 1 or would you rather lose 4 games by 1 and no. lose and win none? I'd rather win 3, but I'm just saying I can look so, at I can look at the perspective. So, of the what's four. more competitive, the four three or the four zero? Oh? I don't know which one is heavier. One pound of wind. <laughs> well, one pound of feathers is the same as one pound of steak. But I mean, this is not the same situation. So that we created this competitive sweet bullshit okay. narrative last year. Indiana Pacers were leading three games in the last minute, which was yeah. even more competitive than the Lakers last year. And lost three times mm-hmm. in games they led in the final minute or so. Yeah. That said, they got swept. Yeah, I I, I get you. I'm on I'm on your side, but they I'm got not. swept. But I'm not. I would have rather seen a healthy New York Knicks okay. play the Boston Celtics. Yeah. That would have been a very competitive, mm-hmm. non-sweep series. Yeah. Do I think it was seven? No. But I think yeah, it's a much probably six. A healthy you know, Jalen Brunson gets one again, one game. You know, I think it goes six, but we never got it. I think the Knicks have a. I mean, Thibodeau is a good coach to me. I think people say he runs. You can't run a guy in the ground that's playing eighty-two games. <laughs> He's playing eighty-two last year. He's not being run into the ground. I think what you have to look at is the fact that his numbers dropped from his first year in Brooklyn to his second year. He dropped by seven points per game. Did they have a different coach this year? I have no idea, and well, I don't even knows, care. Who, who I don't even care. Perfect. You're asking me you're asking questions that I would not prepare for. I don't know, and I don't care. Okay. His points per game drops seven points. If, if if LeBron goes from 25 to 18, are you going to say, 
Well, JJ Reddick's the coach. No. How is he being used? I, 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 I like uh, well, Mikel not... Bridges is their best player. Your best player should not have 26 points per game than be set at 19 the next year. That Cam, Cam kid came in and was shooting shots. He was and, he, and, he barely, and yeah, that one for like a five game stretch, and then he sits back on the bench. Yeah. Like, they don't. I, that was weird how they use that guy because that guy would blow up and then they didn't play him because they he play, plays he don't no play defense. defense. He plays you know, no they're defense. trying to teach him a lesson. The NBA, but, they don't want to play his defense. We know this. Can we score it? Can we put it in the bucket? I mean, shit. But I, I, I mean, I don't care about the picks. I think picks are so overrated now. Yeah. We had a bunch of eighteen-year-olds being drafted, nineteen-year-olds being drafted. Most of these guys are going to suck. Don't Most pan of these out. guys you, you've never heard of. They don't pan out. I still don't believe in European players overall. Because you can still, yeah, Joker, Luca. But after name, that, me, name me another one in the Giannis. After that, it's, name me another one besides that. That European player some, that has been drafted in the last six or seven years. It's really just Luca because Joker's ten years in, Giannis is ten years in. Name me another player in the last six or seven years out of Europe who's made a mark. Nobody that I can think of. Luca. That's really it. That's really it. I don't know who else from Europe in the last six, seven years where, has been drafted. Where's Say going from? Who? Oh, uh, he's from probably somewhere in Europe. But is he a top twenty player? No, no not yet. No. I like him. He's not top. Probably not a top thirty player. I mean, I'm going to go into your LeBron thing about again as usual the Lakers with two of the top twelve guys. But whatever. Um, but I, I mean, I think the Knicks made some. I just think it's funny because I've, I've been reading where people are saying. This is the all-star team of role players. <laughs> and well, in theory, they were all second options from somewhere else. Yeah. None of them were a but, guy, the guy from where they were, like really. I mean, but Brunson is a legit one now. Oh, know? he's a monster. He's a monster. Randall was a one. And those he's teams, really a two. And, they, and that team won 20 games. He's No, 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 no. The, the one year they went to the playoffs. And, was he know. the one? Was he the one? In yeah. New York. In New York. Didn't they go to the I, I, I don't remember. The year we swept them or remember. we beat them. We beat them. Was it I don't remember. before? I don't, re- I don't remember. Somebody, we just beat them last year. Didn't somebody punch the glass or something? Was, was that? I don't, I, I don't know. We beat them last year 4-2. And Brunson was their best player. Okay. I thought we beat them again. But no worry about it. Okay, yeah. We okay. beat them back when LeBron was here. That was that long ago? This is Carmelo. Yeah, we beat them 4-1 then. Um mm-hmm. I don't remember. If I'm if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I know that Randall has been the number one option in New Orleans, and I think they won 20 games or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Don't quote. <laughs> but OG Ananobi getting a five-year, $212 million deal. Mm-hmm. The man averages 12-4-2 for his career. 12-4-2. I mean, but – Last you... year, 14-4-2. Okay. And we're going to – like you just said it. Who is a star anymore? No. They're giving out contracts to guys who are Jags. Just a guy. OG Ananobi is a role player. He's not a star. He's a, the new term, the three and D guy. Yeah. In a league that plays no D. So if he's worth five years, $212 million in today's NBA, tell me why. Tell me why Clay Thompson has to fight to get paid. And you know I don't like Clay Thompson. But Clay Thompson is more than a is a better player than OG and No. No, 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 no. Not at this point. Not? No, not at this point. Okay. OG, OG defense. What, 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 what are we what are we what are we what are we basing this on now? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the stats I'm, I'm not, and show you I'm that not, I'm not they're going, not close. I'm not going by stats. Everything can't be quantified. Not going by, by stats? Everything can't be really? quantified by stats. We, we okay, know. so the guy that averages 18 a game, 43 percent, 39 percent from three against a guy who averages what? goes by his field goal. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, okay, I I use it all, dude. I you know I, I, I get that. I get it all. But look okay. at the game. Why he, he, okay, so he, he shoots 40. He shot 40. Well, he only played 23 games for the Knicks. But he shot 48 percent, 39 percent from three. Average 14 points per game. So, so high. he's a higher from two, but this literally the same from three. He's mm-hmm. never shot 40 percent from three. And is a better defender than Clay right now. Is he okay? Fabulous. You know that. He's a Clay. better. De- he's a he. I don't even like Clay Thompson. I'm defending. This bullshit. No, no, I get you. Where we're sitting here dropping five years, two hundred and twelve million dollars to a guy 
who's m- basically the same guy as Clay Thompson right now. I, I I agree, but Clay Thompson is also on his way out with injuries. You have to put that in, you have to put that in perspective. Oh, Jan and Nobi missed the last fucking how many games? No, he he's injury prone. Also, he was injured, but he's younger you, and injury prone. Clay's on the way out and injury prone. OJ and Obi, OJ and played 43 games in 2021. Rudy, it's just he how played it is. 48 in 21 22. Once you get He's old, not played 70 games since he was a rookie. Once you He's get, injury prone too. Once you get, yeah, I said that. Once you get older, that's you just how. just dropped him five for 212. Once you get older, that's how it goes. If I'm Jalen Brunson, I'm like, you must be out of your goddamn mind. I'm pissed. Of course, but you what, what Jalen Brunson gonna do? Go ask for what, another contract? They don't. Yeah, do not right now. Yeah, exactly. I rule. He can't. Yeah, exactly. he has for a trade. He has he to gonna get trade. So the Knicks are gonna take advantage of the fucking opportunity that they have to build a roster. And Brunson will never get paid. Around, huh? And Brunson will never get paid. No, he'll get. Brunson's gonna get paid. When will he get paid? Uh, he he definitely. Well, he got two more years left of his contract. Well, how how does Jalen Brunson? He paid. Well, he got a four year, one hundred million, right? He's twenty seven. He's twenty seven years old. He's he played done, two. He years done two, two years of it. Four years for a hundred million. So he's gonna. They're gonna go give him a hundred million when he's uh, three hundred million when he's thirty. He better if he keep if he do it. Have he's another 30? year. Thirty. He'll he'll come in for a contract extension next year. You know how it works. Remember, he's a six two guard. He so he has to have another strong year, and he'll come in for a contract extension next year. He has to get it paid. He got to get it done next year. Because, you know, if they wait to the fourth year, he's, he's going against, you know, the this dude is This dude is making more, more than double or close to double what Jalen Brunson's making. Yeah, Not I mean, double. He's, he's, he's close. To no, 43. Yeah, 43 million. About 43. 43. Million. Yeah. He's making $18 million more a year than your best player. And that's how the, the league goes nowadays. That's just how it is, Rudy. I think we just have to accept it, man. I know we're we're kind of old school in thinking. I'm not, you're, this, you're, more, you're way more old school than me, but <laughs> you know how I feel about players getting contracts that they, they shouldn't be getting. I, I, you know, so Tyler Johnson all over again. You remember Tyler that John, year? Tyler remember Johnson, that year? Well, the, pro- the problem was his contract was backloaded. Yeah, yeah. Remember that year? Alan, like, Crabb, Alan Crabb got paid. Well, they all got paid that one year because of the TV deal. And I think that's about to pop off again. Is TV deal. I don't even know what it is because they haven't announced the TV deals yet. Yeah, I don't know if this is the year for TV deal money or if it's next year. But if you're paying OG Ananobi five years, two hundred and twelve million dollars, hey, for, for fourteen four and two, they, my God, these so, players from the, these so, players from the eighties and nineties who averaged fourteen mm-hmm. four and two rolling over in their grave. Bus, bus drop. I hope they're not dead yet. They're eighties <laughs> and nineties, dude. That's just um, the That's four, just four, 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 I mean, they. That's just. Bad man, they must be sitting here saying 14 4 and 2 would make me 200 million dollars. That yeah. is bananas, so absolutely they, crazy. They won when he was on the court, and that's what they're gonna go by, right? Yes, yeah. they did. They did. They did. I, I can't, I can't debate that or dismiss, dis- dispute that or di- dismiss that. They absolutely won when he was on the court, yeah. and if that's their reason for it, hey, good luck, man. Because you still ha- you still need to pay Hartenstein, and I like Hartenstein. Yeah, I would gladly take myself some I- Isaiah mm. Isaac Hart, whatever Isaiah that, Hartenstein. That motherfucker, in Miami. Is. I would take him down here in a second. That's who Angel Reese is. Hartenstein. She hustles. She gets on the glass. Why did you go to Angel Reese? Right? Lefty, lefty, um, fight hard. She gonna fight for every offensive rebound. Hartenstein's gonna get every offensive rebound if you let him. Angel Reese, if you let her, she's gonna get every offensive rebound. It's not the prettiest thing. Lefty, go up with it. Bam. Hartenstein Hart- and Hart- Reese. Hart- I found mm-hmm. her comparison. It's not Zebo. It's freaking. Yeah, Hart- when you were Hart- saying Zebo, I was offended for Zebo. Like, what are you talking well, about? I was talking about. Well, it's not fifty-five percent from the field. The, like, what are you the, talking about? But Zebo was a bully, and Angel. Bully, Reese, yeah, he was good. Angel, Angel Reese is not. He was good. good. She's good. He, they ran their offense through him. Yeah, but she's good. They ran their offense. their offense through her. Well, the offense got ran through For her. One game, they when played Alyssa, 17, 16 when a, games. When Alyssa Smith was on her, well, the they, well they, that was a quarter. They she, because it, 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 going to the fourth, she had ten she, points. Like she, she ran the green shoes out of that girl. <laughs> she, all right, man. Bam out of bio, three years, one hundred and sixty-five million dollar <laughs> extension. While they're sitting here dicking around with Jimmy Butler. What are your why, thoughts? You, why are you trying to piss me off today? 
I was in a good mood. I, 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 I just saw a, it pop up today. I, I was like, I was kidding me? We just pay, no. when, and here's what kills me. I'm listening to local sportscasters say he's a superstar. No. Oh my god! Like, I, look, Bam Adebayo is a good is, player. He's a good player. He's a good player. He's a player that you but need on your team. You can't throw around the word superstar. Just superstar. Go if he is our best player, we'll win. We're gonna win 15 games. He will never be the best player for the Miami Heat. And if he's the best player, we're a 15 win team, maybe 20. At best, he you can't run an offense through him. He doesn't pull, you, he doesn't do well, anything you offensively. You can't run an offense through him when he doesn't he, want the ball. He doesn't want the when ball. He wants, when he wants to be that guy. We've seen Bam go get aggressive and catch the ball and bring the ball up the court and initiate the offense. We've seen that shit. He, his name pisses me off sometimes because I know his potential. I know how good he is. I know his ability. He could jump. He can shoot the ball. He can move laterally. He could turn and face people and hit that jump shot. He could turn and face people, jab, jab, jab. He could bully them in the paint and dunk it on them. I've seen it happen with my own fucking two eyes, Rudy. We I both have. It, it happens once every it. 10 games. And everybody in Miami, our problem with Bam is because he comes out every year. The beginning of the year, he comes out hot. He shows us these new tools that he added in his fucking repertoire. Or he, we see him in Olympic basketball, USA, one-on-one against Durant. He's going at him. He's doing all these moves. And then he comes out the first week, first two weeks, and we're like, bam, bam, added so much shit to his repertoire. And then right around game 55 or something every fucking year, 55, I don't know what happens around March. I don't know. February, March, something happens in his life or on the court where he's just – becomes a freaking nice guy where, oh, here, you get the ball. Here, you get the ball. I don't want it. Oh, my gosh, I don't feel comfortable with my shot anymore. Oh, my gosh, I don't want to turn and face and be an aggressive anymore. I want to sit back and, and let it come to me and and, and be a, 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 the motherfucking guy who gets – I don't even know what anymore. He just, oh, you have it. You have it. I don't, I'm, I'm just going to lay back. And do my thing, and I'm gonna be a defender. I'm gonna go get the defensive player of the year award, and you never fucking get it. But what you could get is be the motherfucking star on this roster and light the and light this shit on fire because nobody can guard him when he turns and face any opponent. And they put these seven footers on; they can't move with him. If they put a six eight guy on him, they're not strong enough to deal with his strength that he brings to the freaking paint. But no, he. I don't know. It's around March. I got to go find out what goes on in March or April in his fucking life every year that he becomes a freaking giant vanilla wafer. <laughs> he gets so freaking soft. And I don't get it about him because he is extremely talented. So the contract, you know, look at the numbers. His numbers justify, oh, he gets 20 and 10 boards and and he he's, he could switch on everybody, he could guard everybody. He allows Eric Spolcher to do so much things defensively. But when it comes to being the motherfucking guy when we need him in critical moments in the playoffs, he 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 falls. He wilts. He 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 just goes to the fucking ground and 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 just lay there with his thumb in his fucking mouth and just takes whatever and, be, and 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 becomes a baby. I don't know. I don't like it. I hate it. His contract is bloated. Um, it's PMSing. And and then that's what we have to deal with. But now we hear that Jimmy Butler is, we don't know what's going to happen with him. And, and all these ESPN people talking about he's going to leave. And we're like, man, y'all don't know shit about Miami culture. But now we're like. Oh, that, 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 that stuff is. And that's, it. first of all, the Lakers drafted Dalton Connect. 17. Ooh, they got Lakers. Connect. That's hey, a huge. So I seen Connect play three games, and I say this boy can play basketball. The problem was, with him, he he's older. Huh? He was projected top 10. Yeah, he projected like seven. He was projected top 10. So yeah. I, to go 17 to the Lakers, that's he's, a steal, and that's a big up. That's a big That's time a pick. good draft pick, Lakers. I, I'm not mad at that. He couldn't play basketball. That kid can shoot it. He could come off the screen and get it. He could get it off the dribble. He's um, he's athletic. I'm tired, wanna... say, I'm tired of people saying. I'm tired. people saying though that oh they're older. Yeah, they're better. They're yeah, some, play. some players are play. Yeah, There's projects. Listen Look to at Hamehakes. 
what was he? He was older. But he came Great. and he was he was a player that was able to contribute from day freaking one, and Eric supposed to trust in him. Are y'all gonna trust a lot of y'all rookies who's nineteen years old, eighteen years old? No, y'all yeah. gonna be bad as hell, and then y'all gonna fire mm-hmm. Monty Monty Williams for not getting the best out of his eighteen, nineteen, twenty years old in his first year. I mean, come on, but guys. You got, like you got Zachary Rasach. I can't pronounce his name from France. He's number one. Alex Saar from France. He's number two. Reed Shepard is a shooting guard out of Kentucky. Castle. Stephon Castle out of UConn. Ron Holland, no idea who that is. G League Ignite. Tidjan Saluan from France. Klingling that uh, good? Huh? You like Kling, Kling, Klingling? Klingling number seven. You like him I think, that much? I think, I think Klingling is really good, but I don't see him well, he's as... Gonna be a, he's going to be a, 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 a lob catcher, but... I don't know. It, it may, defensively, he's Stop really blocking. good, but I don't know what like offensive skills are limited. He, um, Rob Dillingham with Kentucky is at eight. Zach Eady went nine. I'm very happy for Zach Eady. You know, I, I wanted him to stick around for the Heat because I we needed a big. Um, so I, that tells me that we probably would have drafted Zach Eady. No, we wouldn't. Been. No, we wouldn't because Bo don't like playing a big with Bo with Bam anyway. But well, you know what I heard? Well, well, you need to play a big with Bam because Bam can't guard nobody who's big. He's too small. But that's not what Spoke thinks. You know Spoke don't that's like that. That's not what Spoke thinks. You got to play bigs, man. Spoke we're too like small. That. We're he, losing because we're too small. And you, know, you can't do nothing about it at this point. We are so, big. Laurie Markkinen, I heard that he's in the running to be a Miami Heat. And I've been <clears> trying to trade for him for the past three well, years. Who are we trading for him? I've been trying to trade for, for him for the past three, four years. But every time I talk to Pat Riley and I try to go to the Miami Heat office, they don't let me in. And I and I and I knock on the door and I and I and I'm right out there on Biscayne Boulevard and I'm trying to get in the facility and they be like, No, Nick, you can't get in. And I'd be like, But I got this trade idea. I'm talking to Utah. I'm talking to my guy Danny Ainge, because he don't fuck with you, Pat. So I'm calling him myself. And he said we could make a deal. We gotta put this first round pick. We gotta put in Caleb Martin. And we got to put another player in and we could get him. But you know what? Pat Riley don't fuck with me like that. So now we don't have him. And now Bam is out there fending for himself. <laughs> we don't have another big. Because we're never going to get a, a big man yeah. that you think we're going to get. We're going to get another a stretch four type big man who can do it. That's and, that's why we, we and, that's, and that's why we can't. But Rory Markin is like 6'11". So I can I, that will suffice. Not Kevin Love, who's 60 years old, who's out there, could just shoot threes. We need another big man who, who can really play basketball over here in Miami. Like, a stretch four who can actually rebound a little bit and can move around and actually go get a bucket every now and then and not be 60 years old. Kevin Love was cool, but he's a bench player. He's a role player right now. Like, I would love to have him on our team to be coming in and do spot minutes. Yeah, if, 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 if he's healthy enough to last a week. But he's not a starter anymore. Uh, but, he, but we do play better with him on the court sometimes. No, because he, because he he understands basketball. Yes. He understands that when I catch a rebound, the best way for my team to score is for me to outlet that ball as quickly as possible, as far down the court, to a guy who's wide open. And he makes incredible passes. He, he's like the – he. no one even knows what an outlet pass is anymore. You know, because all the way – like the way all these – long rebounds end up in the hands of guards so they don't have you know actual outlet pass like we used to train outlet passing yeah. when i was it like bars are rebounding rudy game i mean that's changed it's oh, longer but, shots well, longer well, rebounds well, well we're one of the worst rebounding teams in basketball for the last few years so like we, we get murdered on the glass and we get murdered by everybody who's bigger than us so that said we're still too small we're still playing a six nine guy at center and we have a six eight guy, six seven guy playing power forward. We got to get Real- more. marking in. Realistically, Jimmy Butler plays power forward for us. When he's we out need marking in. We need a, a Brook Lopez. Yeah. We need somebody who's gonna. Because if Bam is not gonna shoot the ball, like I mean, he's he's shot threes later on in the season, which is scary. What, which on, is which scary, scary good or scary, scary bad. bad? Scary bad. You don't like it? No, I don't like it because he still ha- can't make a seventeen footer consistently. <laughs> So now all of a yeah, sudden he's moment. dropped back. Again, the word the word is consistently. Uh, his moments consistently. It means every game he's giving you can, three years for one sixty five. I want twenty six points a game from your ass. He should twenty six twenty six and twelve Rudy, every when, night. When that man, and we're not we're not getting anywhere near that. When he plays confident, he. Actually, attack. I don't, we don't mind him missing shots. It's and when, when he, and when I, and when when I grow hair, I look less bald. But shit, man, 
<laughs> when? Yeah, I get Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. When he does these things, he doesn't do them on a consistent basis. No, and not his, when we his, his, his averages are up here and then down here, which is why we get the average. It's never like this. March, April, May. I don't know what happens in those months. I, I mean, there's too many of these 12 point, 14 point, 15 point games with nine rebounds and eight rebounds. That's it's you are big. It's you unacceptable need to be a, now. It's it's not, and, and you now you're making three years, 165 million. I, I I hope he lives up to that deal because we're fucking around with Jimmy Butler's contract right now, and Pat Riley ran his mouth. I, look, I take nothing to what Pat Riley said. Jimmy Butler's not going anywhere. This national narrative that they want him to leave us, it, this is a national media narrative that wants to push Jimmy Butler to Philly to play with Embiid. And it's you're on mute. Um, and it's real bullshit to me because this is stuff that's spread by executives. This isn't spread by the Heat. The, the, there's been zero conversation about this locally, but yet you hear about it nationally where these guys are just throwing out hot take. Jimmy Butler's gone. Man, Jimmy Butler just made a commercial for Bad Boys 4 in Miami. Jimmy you know, Butler's not going anywhere. He loves it down here. And they're the Heat are not going to – they're not going to do that, make that same mistake they did with Dwayne Wade. Are you you crazy? know how they feel about us. You know they <laughs> want every player on every team to build every roster because they don't want no damn parity around the league. They say they want parity, but they want everybody to go to New York. They want every player to play for the Lakers. Like, motherfuckers, there's other teams in the well, league. Well, want, they'd want them to play here if we could pay for them. We don't have the cap. Room. No, no, I'm talking about the media. I'm talking about these people on ESPN. Well, they try to put media, everybody well, on the Lakers roster. They try to put well, everybody Steve, on the Knicks roster. I'm like well, Stephen, a, Stephen A. Smith wants to spend every June in Miami, and he literally was here for the end. He was at the fucking Panthers game, game seven. Yeah. Which but we're, we'll get into in a second because that was out ridiculous. But – yeah, I, yeah, they want to push. Yeah, you need New York and LA to be good. No, like, you that's, don't. I, they've been bad for forever, and the league's been yeah, okay. And, and, and the ratings for the league have been atrocious for no, 15 not years. Every year, no. We have the league, the league the had rating, a lot of good moments. The, the ratings for the league are worse today than they were 25 years ago. They are. They are. I mean, it's, it's, you, it's, have it's, to, you have to put in streaming, tracks. streaming, bootlegging. A lot of stuff is different. Bootleg, are we bootleg games now? We bootleg games? Yeah, so, are, you gonna, are, are, you gonna, are you going to movie theaters and recording the game on the No, I'm talking about this on websites where people are streaming. Those are all tracked, Dick. Those are all tracked. Oh, yeah? Those are that counts. Everything is tracked. You Ooh. think they're just getting ratings off of a off of a cable box? No. Oh, my bad. I need to pay attention more. We can more. track our views. We can track our views on 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 YouTube. Like they track everything. I don't know if they add the ones that's you know the they little track like, that course. shouldn't be that they shouldn't be running those sites. Oh, you know? pi pirating services. I'm sure they don't track. But yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But they track Hulu TV. They track YouTube. TV, yeah, they track you, all. Everybody TV. don't watch those anymore, Rudy. People are watching some other shit. I'm not gonna stitch on myself. You're watching TNT. You're, you're watching TNT on your Fire Stick on your. Rudy, don't get me in trouble. I, I mean, listening. Shoot. I, anyhow. Okay. We got. We got. I'm gonna let's let's jump into the Florida Panthers real fast since yeah. I brought it up. I'm wearing my Matthew Kachuk jersey that my stepmother Susie got for me for Father's Day. I'm very appreciative because these these jerseys are expensive as hell, mm -hmm. and it's hard for me to spend two hundred and twenty five dollars for a jersey. I'm, I'm mad now. Why? I remember I went, we were playing at Edmonton and I went to yeah. Edmonton yeah. and I went to a sports check. That's what they have in Canada. It's like the sports authority, whatever it takes, <clears throat> whatever not. And they had an Edmonton jersey on like sale. It was like $48, $40. And I had got my per diem that week and it was a hot 250 bucks. And I said, damn, should I spend it on this jersey or should I go home with most of my per diem? You know what I did, Rudy. I'm I'm frugal. I don't. Yeah, you. But the jersey is nice. It was real fresh, and I could have been rocking my Edmonton Oilers jersey, even though I'm rooting for the Panthers. You know, was, and, was it a player that was still on the team, or they had traded the guy? Know which who was I don't know who it was at that moment. It was like three, two <laughs> years ago, two and a half years ago, three years ago. I was with Winnipeg at that moment, so it had to be like three years ago. But whatever. I'm just saying. Yeah. 
I should she got me. She got me this jersey, and look, I've been wanting to buy one of these things, but I have a hard time spending two hundred twenty five dollars on some long sleeve ass hot fucking shirt that I'll it's never fresh, wear. Man. The only place I can wear it is at home when I was watching the game or to a hockey I'm, game. You're watching the hockey game or to the hockey game because it's cold as shit in there. Yes. Otherwise, I'm never wearing this. It's a hundred degrees outside. It's two, and I'm not even wearing pads. I'm just this. Jer- I'm sweating in the house right now, and I'll be honest. She got it for me before game four. Okay. Right? No, was it before game four or after game four? Well, when was Father's Day? Got to go find what Father's Day was. It was two weeks ago. When the hell? Yeah, two weeks two ago. Two weeks ago. Not last weekend, the weekend before that one. I'm trying to see when we lost. So Six, that would be the 16th. The, the yeah. 16th. So we won on Monday. That was two. Monday. So I, th- I think, okay, I, she got it for me. I think the next day was game four. So the 15th. I, I believe. The 15th yeah, was I, the I believe game four was the, I'm going to check, fuck, man. Jesus Christ. 15th was a Sunday. It was Father's Day. Yeah, I can't be wrong on all this crap today. <laughs> That's embarrassing. No, 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 shit. We're, we're awful. Uh, Monday was the 24th. So the 20th. I'm just, the I'm just six, trying to see. 16th, you're right. The 16th was a Father's Day. 16th. Where the hell is this crap? Rudy, the 16th was a Father's Day. Let's go. I understand. I'm, try- I'm trying to see what day the game was, Nick. Okay. Okay. Lord, bro. Okay. We were up 3 0. Yes. So that. So then the Thursday, wait, the 13th, Saturday. So we were down. Okay. We were up 3 1 after when I got the jersey. We were up 3 1. I wore the jersey on game five, six. We got, we lost. I took the shit off. Your bad luck. I took, I took it off. Your bad luck. I wore it on game. I, I wore it in game six. We lost. I took it off. <laughs> I didn't wear it in game seven. Okay. It was sitting on my chair. Okay. I'm like, I'm not putting this shit back on. Like, there's a reason we're losing games. And I don't know if it's this jersey that I never had that I got now. But yeah, I didn't wear it after. I didn't wear it. I wore it getting a game. I, I Did I even wear it in game six? I, I, I put it on for a second. And then they started, they scored so fast, like, this shit off again. Like, yeah. there's something going on with this thing. I never put this thing on in game seven. I'm wearing it today. And, and but bringing up the Panthers, it's awesome to see what happened. They win game seven in a perfect world. You, if you're told you're going to win game seven, you're happy. That's the best way to win a series. Winning, winning a seven to me, that's <laughs> but sweeps this, are fun. This was sweeps. the absolutely worst way to win a game. Seven. No, I'm telling you, if you know the answer, yeah, if, like if, if you have the answer before, and then you're going to win game seven, you know that you're going to, I got no problem losing three in a row. Because to to lose three in a row, and then when, and when now and now the whole world is saying Panthers are going to lose Game Seven, Panthers are going to lose Game Seven, and you see how they played in games. You didn't you don't really watch hockey, but you watched that game, right? Yeah. And this is where it's like it's game the game. It's an adjustment. They made an adjustment. And I'm look, I am not a hockey expert. I will not jump on here and talk strategy. Any of that shit. I know the rules, but how they strategize their movements and so forth, I, I don't know. I've, I'm figuring it out. But I've watched like 60, 70 hockey games in the playoffs. I watched tons of hockey in the playoffs because I love the hockey playoffs. They suffocated Connor McDavid, the number 97 for Edmonton. Yeah. They suffocated him. And the way they played game seven, it was like, where was that for these last three games? Because that's what they were doing the first three games <clears throat> and just absolutely dominating them. It's called adjustments, Rudy. Really. I know teams, what they were doing, and they find another way to get their best player more involved or free and open for different shots and how can we... I don't I don't think that's what it was. No. I think they got I think I think I think they got tight. Tight, bored. I, I think they got tight. I think they got nervous. I think they got a little shook. Like they got like they, they always say the last the, hard, the hardest game is the last game. Yeah, the closeout game. But and but at that point, who's more tight? The team that's about to get swept or the team that's about to sweep? One would say the team that's going to get swept. Like what the hell? If, if we lose, we lose. We're we down lose, three. We up. don't give a fuck. Yeah, we don't we, give a fuck. So we're gonna we're gonna do whatever we got to do. And if we lose, we lose. We Whereas were, the team we're that's down winning, yo, we're down yeah. yo. Whatever, yeah, like, we're supposed to lose anyway. So I'm just coming out here freely and playing and, the game. And, and you're the team that's supposed to finish this off. And everyone's saying, you're going to finish their asses off tonight. Mm-hmm. And you get bombed. 
like not beat. They got bombed. It only take one. one. It only take one game to change. The and beat. it and it completely switched it a little bit, and it and it got the Panthers almost on their back foot because and then making these stupid mistakes where they're giving up shorthanded goals on power plays where you're making bad passes and every like we had the the, the breakaway goals. They had multiple breakaway opportunities in the first three games. They didn't score on any of them. In the next three, they scored multiple times on breakaway goals. And it was like almost every goal they got was a breakaway, a rush. And because the Panthers had their defensive players pushing in or, or losing sight of where they're supposed to be. And next thing you know, it's an odd man rush the other direction. It's like a three on, it's like a, what, a two on one, three on two in basketball. Yeah. You know, y- your point guard's supposed to get his ass back. If your point guard doesn't get back, what happens? It's a layup. Yeah. You know, and now Bobrovsky played like shit for three games. Like they can, they love him and they can say all the nice stuff about him. That's the goalie, he's right? He's the goalie, Sergey Bobrovsky. He was incredible from the entirety of the playoffs through game three. Game four, five, and six, he was bad. Like he was giving up goals for him that he was giving up or like, what you, what's happening? Even the goal he gave up on the breakaway that made it 1-1 in game seven, he stopped that goal, that shot, multiple times in the first three games. Mm-hmm. He stopped that. Because you could see he was – it was like, do I come all the way out? Do I not? Do I use my stick? And then it hit his pad and jumps over. But, of course, the defense made a mistake. However, for the majority of that game, their forecheck, which forecheck is basically they've got their forwards pushing forward, <clears throat> trying to create turnovers inside that blue line because that's the offsides line. Mm-hmm. You create a turnover right there, best chance to score. And, I mean, their forecheck was incredible. It was fantastic. And they pressured like fucking crazy. Connor McDavid could not get free. He could not get free from them. And, you know, to, they, win the, they win the game. I was it was Sam Reinhardt. Um, Hits that goal. He's their leading scorer mm-hmm. to make it two to one. And, and you see when these it ricocheted off, off the goalie right under his armpit. Yep, right to his armpit. You know, and you're like, you just don't give him another goal. And, and Bobrovsky was a wall. He came. What? He went back to being the wall. Now his teammates helped him. Huh? His teammates was was well. That's their goal. job. They need oh, their oh, Yeah, of course, of course. I'm I, I'm just saying. Um, but like the amount of pressure he was facing in the third period because they kind of like took their foot off the gas on and, offense and Edmonton was and they were every every time I say oh they oh, oh Edmonton is attacking it oh they bring oh, it out they bring it out they're attacking, oh. they're attacking. And you know me as a black man watching this damn sport all we like because it became like a big thing everybody was talking about it so. You know, we tuned in, you know, the the African American community, we tuned in, we're like what the heck is going on? And people from Florida tuned in. But all it was like this was choo, 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 choo. And but it was exciting, it was exhilarating. It was like, oh my God, this is a fun sport to watch. And all I could take away from it is, damn, these mo- mother lovers are freaking athletic. They are, like when, it, when we talk about who's the most athletic sport, the hardest sport to play, I looked at it. It's I hockey. looked at it that game, and I say, "Yeah, hockey is the hardest sport to play." They, they're running around on a blade with a stick in their hand, and they're mo- making the most athletic plays. They they can't fall. They they gotta go at this. I remember going to a hockey practice in Canada, and the rate of the speed that they were moving on this ice was ridiculous because I was going to, you know, regular ice skate. And, you know, me, I'm just holding on to the walls, trying to get by, trying to make sure I don't fall. These people, the rate and speed that they move at, and then they're moving with these sticks and they're trying to hit a puck and they're trying to get into this little goal. The goal is not that big, people. It is no. not that big. The goalie is almost as big as the freaking goal. And to score a goal, it takes so much freaking craft and so good to even shoot it in there with accuracy to get it at the to where you need to get it to where the goalie can't stop it. 
it's just an amazing, beautiful thing to watch. And, you know, most times we watch just to see the fight. But it was just good to see, like, a good sport atmosphere. The crowd was hyped, you know, ready to throw our little rats on the floor. But the crowd was hyped in, 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 in Broward and in Fort Lauderdale. And um, it was just fun to see, like, from a different perspective because I don't know what the hell was going on. The referee, they were talking about some icing. But I was like, I'm like, what is well, that? Ice, I, icing is basically when the puck is hit from one side of the of the of the ice to the other, all, all the way to the, to other. the other. And they're doing it, they're doing it to clear it out, basically. Yeah. So they started back but over. You, but you'd like to not have it if you're the team that does it. You'd like to not have it go all the way. You like to stop. You would like it to stop. Okay. Right before that line that goes okay. where it curves around the ice, mm-hmm. you like it to stop because if it stops there, then there's no icing. Okay. And they also use a lot of times. And again, I'm not an expert, folks, so don't take me as an expert, please. I'm not. I never played hockey. I can't he's, skate. He's an MMA expert per Dana White. Per Dana, per Dana White. That's my expertise, and I'm and I and I'm an expert on every other sport. But hockey, I'm not an expert. And I'm not an expert on golf, either. but uh, or horse racing, <laughs> or pickleball. I'm a good. I'm good. I'm good at pickleball. I might. I might enter. Don't, I might. You'll pop it. You'll pop your other Achilles if you play that shit. No, no, no. I play. No. It, I play. It, I play it. God, I'm good. Um, I'm really good. You're, you're getting whiter by the day. Um, it's fu- it's fucking fun. It's- <laughs> pickleball, it's fun, man. You know what pickleball is? It's it's for it's tennis for people who can't play tennis. I don't uh, care. I don't care. <laughs> I can't play tennis. Like- you know what pickle? You know what pickleball is? It's that beach paddle fucking thing that used to have back in the day yeah. with the blue ball. The- That's what pickleball is. Yeah. To me today. Um, what they used to play? What's it called? <clears throat> I- Miami, I Miami highlight. Oh, highlight's different. I'm talking about like you be in the in the beach with those two paddles and yeah. the blue ball. Oh, you're talking about when they play in the in the in the, in in the, the beach um, at the, or at the rink. for fun. Yeah, yeah okay. or whatever. I mean, yeah. But you know, yeah. So icing is when the the, the puck yeah, is cleared. Okay. But they want to because you if you if you see they're shifting people over mm-hmm. and over. The fact that they don't get caught for penalties for that more often to me is remarkable because they're just they're moving so fast. So and a lot of mistakes and mis- a lot of goals get scored when they when they're on shift changes. Yeah, and you beat the shift, and next the the, the, the line change, and next you know you have an open open shot at the net, one on one with the goalie. But you know there are certain rules that I still don't know. Like there are certain things when I see that to me look clearly done on purpose, and they give it a two minute penalty instead of a five minute penalty. The game overall was very very clean in game seven, so that was good to see. But the way that they, the you can see how guy like the coach Paul Maurice when he was interviewed, like you could see like this guy keeps such an even demeanor and like you're you've just lost three straight and he's just keep this even demeanor where inside he's, he's probably going home. Have to, he, he's going home saying we better not lose this fucking game. Pour me and you mother, see like pour me like, a motherfucking drink. Like he's holding this cup and he's like and, and he's saying they're. But, Fuck yeah, <laughs> over and over again, you know. But Bobrovsky became a wall, and and I was, it. He was amazing. He was absolutely amazing. I have ordered a whole bunch of Panthers shit that's going to show up the, in the next two weeks. Um, damn, Rudy, I got I got a jersey <clears throat> for you, man. I got to give you a CFL jersey. I'm okay. gonna drop it off. All right. Next um, time we see, I meet, I see you. We did hang out right. this last weekend, guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, Had a good time. Yes, sir. <laughs> it didn't hit me until I got home. <laughs> we won't tell y'all what that was, but okay. But but Easy. no, for, for for real, for real, it was. I got a whole bunch of shit I ordered, so I got I have to create more space on my sports walls in in my in my sports room. But yeah, man, the, the Panthers so exciting, and like we were saying, like they've been good the last three years. They had they won the Presidents Cup, the Presidents Trophy for the best record in hockey uh, two years ago. They got they got murked by the devil the devil race the lightning Tampa Bay Lightning uh-huh. um, got absolutely smoked in that series of four four zero and they traded Jonathan Huberdeau who was one of the top I think maybe the top goal scorer in hockey that year and they traded him and again I am not knowledgeable enough about hockey but I saw when we but one thing you saw was that our defense was bad. Like, we were outscoring teams. We would come back in games, but you can't win that way in the playoffs. You can't win an Indiana Pacers. You cannot win a game where you're just outscoring people in the playoffs because it's a series. 
They're going to figure you out, and they're going to find a way to lock your ass down. And that's what happened against Indiana. We got uh, not Indiana, I was the but against Tampa, against the Tampa Bay Lightning. They they okay. busted our ass. Yeah. So we they traded Jonathan Huberto, and you're saying like, what are you for us novice laymen? What the fuck are you doing? They traded him for Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk is why the Panthers are champions. Matthew Kachuk, the attitude that he brings, the attitude that Paul Maurice brought to this franchise, they finished as an eight seed last year, end up in the finals, the Stanley Cup Cup finals, lose in large part because they got hurt, not because they didn't, weren't good enough. They got hurt. Vegas was damn good. You need everything to fall into place as well, as you know, to win a championship. It just it's not all skill. It's a lot of luck and luck. You gotta have some luck. You gotta have luck. And they come back this year. Now they're the two seed. They beat the one seed. They beat the three seed. They went they blew out Tampa in the first round four to one, which in itself was big because of that past trauma of losing to Tampa so many damn times in the playoffs in, in you know, previous in years. Because they'd lost them also before that. I think the year before they lost them 4-2. to two. So we lost to Tampa 4-2, to two, got swept 4-0. It was not a competitive sweep. <laughs> it was a wipeout. And now you have – this team is now – there's some new players, but you can see – I mean, Kachuk brings an attitude that is just – you love this dude, and he's at the elbow room pouring beer out of the cup yesterday, um, in the damn ocean holding the cup over his head yesterday. yesterday. That's how it's you just, party. it's awesome. I'm so happy for that team. It's crazy that I get to see a Panthers Stanley Cup championship before the Dolphins have won a playoff game in the last twenty some odd years. I, I, I mean, that's bananas to me. And you have a, Lamar, now you yeah. have. And now you have two, three of the last five cups are in Florida. Tampa has two of them. They went back to back. So you're talking about the best hockey in the world is being played where people cannot ice skate, <laughs> where it doesn't snow. They're still Canadians. They are. Yeah, I know. They are. They are. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, but – we only had – our team, I think, had 12 or 15 12, – I think 12 Canadians, and the rest were American. We had Finnish, Russian, some – Kachuk's classmates with Jason Tatum in high school. So they both won championships the same year. Uh, I, it's just – it's a dope – it's a dope-ass experience. Can they repeat? It's hard. It's the hardest thing to repeat in to me. Hockey is harder than basketball to repeat it to me. And, and, and football. Because if you have – Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> like that never changes. What about Let's take, baseball huh? is hard to repeat. Baseball is hard to repeat too. Baseball is real hard because a lot of injuries, 162 games, all that shit. But I think basketball hockey, probably the easiest to repeat. Yeah, as long as you have Shaq and Kobe, you're gonna repeat. For <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna win. That's the last repeat? No, the Heat. No, the, the Heat. No, the Warriors. The Warriors. No, what the, the fuck Warriors. am I talking with K, about? With KD, Steph, in the most boring oh, finals ever. Like, what am I on. talking about? Yeah. It's, it, there's been so many repeats in basketball, and the last it's the yeah. three p the three p gets more difficult in basketball. But ever yeah, there's been how many repeats since 1990? Yeah, I'm, I mean I'm, for Christ's sake, I had a couple. Had a the couple. Bulls won three, the Rockets won two, the Bulls won three. A couple shots of tequila. The Lakers win three and four. The the Heat win two. The the Laker, I'm sorry, the Lakers win back to back. The Heat win two. You know uh, the Spurs the never repeated, huh? No, they did not. They never repeated. And they can thank Ray Allen for that. Um, but yeah. who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows how Miami come back next year? You know they they were fueled by to, to just come back and and bust the Miami Heat ass because of what happened the year before. They were on a bench. Oh, there was nothing we could do about oh, the Celtics. It. No, the Spurs that oh, the year. Spurs. Oh, the Spurs. But the thing about it, they almost lost. I think to the Mavericks that year. Yeah, they almost in the lost. first they round, they went. I think they went the seven that in the first round with the Mavericks. Um, yeah, was Karan on that roster? I don't. Was, I, don't I don't remember. It was, a while, making, it was. I'm not making any more mistakes tonight. Damn it! It was somebody, but they went. They went seven that year <clears> with Dallas, so they almost didn't even make it back to Miami. But they, they, 
they kept thinking about that Ray Allen shot, Chris Bosh getting that rebound, LeBron making the three here and there, having a big fourth quarter. And they just they just made it their mission to come back and bust our ass. And they must have shot the ball. They must have shot 70% from three that series. Cause every shot, Danny Green, uh uh, what's the what's the what's the white power Matt, forward name? Matt Bonner. Matt Bonner, Ginobili, Tony Parker was hitting threes. Boris Diaw. Oh my God. It was Yeah. We were we when when LeBron chose to leave game one with a cramp. The man, so if with, you five, clamped, with, with with five minutes to go, if you cramped in, in, up, in a game we're winning. In a game we're winning. If no, because he could have cramped up if D Wade was still D Wade, because D Wade would have been able to to carry us. But D Wade wasn't himself anymore. So I'm not gonna put that on LeBron because young, uh, uh, prime D Wade would have been like, okay, I got you. Don't worry about it. I want to know why he was cramping up. Because I remember the AC broke in the arena, so there was no AC. I used to cramp up before, and then I found a way not to cramp up. All right, yeah, and you know what LeBron had that you didn't have? A budget for the fucking training system. Yeah, but... That would allow him... That that he has magically never cramped up in a game again. So, so, yeah, because you can learn from those experiences. You, You find out how to get your body through it. Or, you know, once you think you're about to cramp up, you take electrolytes, you know, a couple of those packets at half. Wait, 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 oh, 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 you're, oh, oh. So what you're telling me is that in 2014, LeBron James did not drink electrolytes. He probably thought he didn't have to, or he didn't take an, another one, another packet. Who knows, man? But why we got to, why we got to get mad at LeBron? You, you brought it up. I'm just you saying. Brought up it wasn't his. I, because actually... Dwayne Wade played more in that game than LeBron did. And what the what the Dwayne Wade wasn't Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade had 19 points in that game. Chris Bosh had 18. He played 33 minutes. And LeBron, LeBron had what 30? He had, minutes. he had 25. LeBron had and 25. He, and, and he cramped up and he left the game and we lost. Yeah. You know, you know who played more than him? Tony Parker played more than him. Tony Tim Parker Duncan played more. Tim Duncan, who was thirty-seven years old, but played they, more than him. They weren't. They weren't. They weren't counting on to do as much as LeBron did for our team. Okay, see, see how you changing it? He had twenty-five weight at nineteen, and, and Bosch at eighteen, and he left the game cramping up. How much rebounds? So how much assists he had? All those other things coming. LeBron up. had six rebounds and three assists. Well, you're losing yeah. it now, right, Nick? <laughs> you're losing it now, right? You're losing it. because we were winning that game in the after three. And they outscored us by 19 in the fourth quarter. Why did the to- AC go off, Rudy? That's the that's the real question. <laughs> that's the- so you're telling me the guys that live in Miami can't play in hot weather, but He's the from guys Ohio. That live in San Antonio? He's from Ohio. He's from Miami. He his his oh. his body. His, bro, his bro, body. That, was the, that that to me was as bad as Paul Pierce needing a wheelchair for for whatever the for his shoulder. Like, and then magically reappears in, from after in, took a shit, you and know, buckets. and 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 scores buckets. But like, no, we got beat by nineteen in that fourth quarter, and LeBron James was sitting in the locker room. Well, Wade, do something. Yeah, whatever. You know, I All love right. Wade. My bad. All right, man. Not this Wade, but that. But anyhow, congratulations to the Panthers. I love it. I, I probably won't be at the parade because I'm not going to be up. You can't if it's it's at eleven a.m. I have a baby. I got kids. They're on summer break. They want to go to Boomers, and that's one of, you going to the one in Boca. I mean, Boca, in Boca. Sunday. We, I'm yeah. supposed to take my nephews there, so we're, we're like, going. We're going there on Sunday because they're they're leaving in a week to go to visit their mother in Seattle. Okay. okay. Um, but for the rest of the summer, and yeah, that eleven that eleven a.m. thing, Fort Lauderdale Beach. It's gonna be an absolute nightmare. You'll be there six o'clock in the morning. You have to be there at six o'clock in the no, morning. No, man, Otherwise... you can get there, man. Now, why? Like the Florida Air and Sea Show, you can get there, man. You just gotta are know you, how are, to maneuver for a lot of them. Are you comparing? Are you comparing the Florida Air and Sea Show to the Panthers parade? But but you you just gotta find out what part of the beach you want to park. It's ways to get there, Rudy. To yes, the and 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 I'm not gonna and and the place that you want to be. Go park on different. Go park on Federal and take an Uber. You'll be there in seven federal minutes. And pay and pay. Uh, uh, man, please. Well, I'm not get, going. I'm not. I'm not going. No well, I'm not. Parties. I'm just saying. Too there's God, ways to get there. Again, 
People who went to the heat parade would get there at seven o'clock in the morning. I, I remember because I was living in downtown when they were doing it. Yeah. At 7 a.m. I was working on, in downtown. I'm on, 7 o'clock in the morning, they were at that damn parade. I'm on CP time. So and that's why you missed the parade. And you know I will I definitely did. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't here. I was here. I worked in downtown. I had some coworkers. I walked 14 blocks June down the street. June 2000 and what? June 2013. The the one I was in downtown it was 06. 06. It was the first one. It was the oh, first I one. was in college. First I was going one. to college. Yeah, I wasn't working. I was living in Broward in 12, 13 already. Okay. So. All right. But anyhow, we're going to jump into the next topic of discussion. J.J. Reddick. J.J. Reddick had his introductory press conference. Yes, sir. And, I mean, we already know why he got the job. Why? Because his bestie is LeBron. And now I'm wondering at this point if the whole thing was a setup on Danny Hurley. Um to make it look like they really wanted him when the reality was they didn't, and they knew he wouldn't take $11 million. So they lowballed him and not paid him what he should have been, what he needed to get paid to stay in L.A. And they really wanted J.J. Reddick, but they wanted to make it look like, yeah, we tried to get this two back-to-back national champion coach who would never have fit properly with the Lakers, in my opinion, just because he's too... Players, professional basketball players, just can't take that type of in your yeah, face. Yeah, so stuff. why would you offer him the truck or the boatload if you you're not even 11, sure? Because 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 you knew eleven million wasn't enough to but keep. But you're him. not even because sure you, if he can translate from college to the NBA. Why? Again, like I just said, I think it was it could have was it possibly a setup? I don't know. I'm it's a, it's a it's a speculation. Yeah, I know. I get I'm, what I'm telling you right now is JJ Reddick got four years for thirty two million dollars, eight million a year. He said yes. And we knew he would say yes. And he comes out in this press conference and says he's grateful, says, you know, the game is evolving and you have to be adaptable and mm-hmm. the expectation is championships. Well, I don't know why you're expecting championships from this franchise. Although Dalton Connect is a pretty damn good ad- you know, addition. You know, he, he's ex- – but this is where J.J. Redick – oh, man <sighs> – J.J. Reddick's ego is really large. Like, the level of arrogance. So he, fits JJ, in, so he fits in L.A. Perfect. The level of – well, the level of arrogance when you come in a press conference and you and you who have never coached even fucking Little League. He let them know that. Co- yeah, comes in and says his experience was playing for Mike Krzyzewski. And his experience was playing in the NBA. Huh? In talking, he said, in talking to players and great. And yeah, that, makes you, that, that, that makes you a, that makes you the Lakers coach, yeah. And then at the end, towards the end, he claims <laughs> he claims that he never spoke to LeBron, which we know they did all their speaking before he was interviewed, because we're not stupid. In fact, when he said that, someone in the background said, "What?" Like, come on, like bullshit. And they said, they said, no, they said, come on. I guess they're from our podcast. Because we know that's bullshit. We're not stupid. Now, do I believe that maybe he didn't speak to him from the day he was interviewed yep. until the day he was offered, which was like a week? Yeah, possibly. To be so that he did not lie and say that that's what happened. But we know they had conversations in March, April, May. You don't have like you're telling me that this guy who wants to be a head coach, you're doing a podcast with him, and it never the t- the conversation was never brought up one time. Yeah, I was born not I was born in the morning. It wasn't yesterday morning. Um, and then at the towards the end, he's asked about if he feels like. You know, he has to something to like. You know, he says, he says, by the way, no more podcasts. Yeah, he ain't doing no more podcasts right now. But that he's does he have anything to prove, or because of his lack of experience and whatever? And and he goes on. Oh, I don't really give a fuck. And bro, I I don't know if you've ever had a job. And you're sitting next to your job, next to your because I've never I've never seen a player introduced at a press conference mm-hmm. who si- signs a deal. Yep. And is sitting next to his boss, 
and starts spouting off f bombs. I curse. We know I curse. Yeah. I, I am not doing an introductory press conference as the head coach of a team and cursing. Like all he can say is, "I don't care." Well, no, he has to. He has to emphasize how much he doesn't give a fuck what you think, what I think, what anyone thinks, what? and that's perfectly fine. But it is arrogant as fuck. Yeah, it is. In it's shitty. It's embarrassing. You're supposed to be a role model, dude. You're a, you're a head coach. You're supposed to act like a little bit of a role model because you're supposed to be a leader. If you're cussing up a storm in in January, I don't care. This is your introductory press conference. He's all, there's also an article that came off um, on, um, I think it was Bleacher Report, that absolutely crushed him. I, I'll find it, um, and I'll, I'll send it to you. But he got crushed because he kind of took shots at people in podcasts. Your entire career in media started in podcasts. Mm -hmm. That's how you got your jobs doing ESPN. ESPN didn't hire you, then you did the podcast. You were doing the podcast. Yeah. ESPN hires you. You you live on first take. You say some outlandish bullshit, insult the history of the NBA, janitors, bus drivers, garbage men, plumbers. 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 It was, it was plumbers. It was, it was a bunch of them. But you insult most of the former players in the league. You end up being the top guy now for ABC and a week and, and a, two months later you're the head coach of the Lakers that's your experience and you you think that you don't have anything to prove I mean I, I don't know you, you 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 he shows no grace he shows no humility none his first line I'm grateful and that's as humble as he was the entire press conference he shows no grace no humility no true appreciation no, nothing. Just I'm an asshole, and I'm going to show you what it's an asshole. Bro. Listen here, Rudy. His job is to coach the Lakers. Anything yeah. else don't fucking matter. Oh, now okay. I got the f bomb in me, like JJ Reddy. He's going to it to me. His job is to coach the Lakers. His job is to get it done with the Lakers. Anything else, it doesn't freaking matter. His job is to come in, in there and make this a championship team. That's what's suspected in LA. I don't know why, just because they got. 17, 18, 17 banners, and they went to 32 championships. That's what's suspected out there, no matter what the roster is. But he he, he understood the expectation. He knows what's going on. And I want J.J. Reddick to be his true self. If J.J. Reddick cusses and says F-bombs, then come out there and cuss and say f bomb. This is what the whole media has turned into now. Nobody goes on the freaking mic and just says regular words anymore. You hear these all these players and, and, and coaches interviews and after the games, they're they're cursing. It's not like the old days and oh we can't say this word and that word and we get a fine. No, it things have changed. And if that's what JJ Reddick is, be JJ Reddick. JJ Reddick is you know he understands what's comes with it with the territory. He knows that he has to talk to LeBron James about certain things and and, and we could call him his puppet, but your best player and your coach have to be on one accord. LeBron James has to accept coaching, and J.J. Reddick has to know how to coach him and know that there are certain things that's not going to fly, and LeBron has earned it. No doubt about it. LeBron, in 20 years, has earned to be the player, the coach on the floor. Most coaches have their coach on, their floor, on the floor, and that's their point guard. Chris Paul is the coach on the floor. Uh, uh, most top point guards who've been around the league, Steve Nash was the coach on the floor. And if you can be my coach on the floor, we have to relate. We have to talk. We have to make sure that everything is communicated well. You have to be the other my coach on the floor. And that's what LeBron is going to be for him. I don't have a problem with their podcast. I don't have a problem with their relationship. It's cool. As long as they get wins and they find a way to do it. And I think J.J. Reddick was the right man for the job. But he's coming in. He knows LeBron. He seems like a no-nonsense guy. He has his ways of how he thinks basketball should be played. I think he gave away a little bit too much at the press conference. He told their strategies a little bit too much. But what, what, what did he tell? He told them what they wanted to do. If You know, crash the rebound from the sides. And, oh, you know, wow. What a, what a, what a strategic, what a strategic anyway, thing. But anyway, they would have found out. Now, how he's going to implement it, 
But that's that's we're gonna see it. We're gonna see it. We're gonna agree with it. We're gonna disagree. He's gonna be the most dived in on coach. We're gonna dissect him on every move he makes and 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 he's here for it. He understands it. He's ready for it. We don't know how good he's gonna be. That's just how basketball is. You can have all the X's and O's and you can seem like this guy, but when it comes down to it, can you get the job done? Will he get the job done? He has two top twelve players. Okay. And let's talk about let's talk about okay before we get to that. Yep. JJ Reddick the next day was put on blast by an author. Yep. Halima, Halima Nash. Yep. Founder of startup Rosecrans Ventures, and she posted on X that I've been called only been called the N word to my face by a white man once mm. in my life. Yep. And it was on the campus of Duke University while I was doing work with the basketball team. Okay. And today he was named the new head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. Yes, ma'am. What a world. Why did she wait this long to say anything? He was on ESPN. He was on his podcast. He's been a top, you know, he was in the NBA. And you wait till now to bring this up? It seems like you're clout chasing this lady. Because you could have said it a long time ago. You waited to this exact moment to become the coach of the Lakers. Come on, man. Cut the sh- you know, my favorite my favorite slogan and favorite words right now is cut the shenanigans, man. We don't want to hear about it now because you have ample amount of time to bring it up. And you wait till now to bring it up when you become the coach. Man, cut the shenanigans. Cut the malarkey. We don't want to hear about it, man. There was so much time that you could have told us about this. And now you want to get in your feelings because he's a coach and you want to bring spotlight on yourself to get some national media acclaim for it. No, man. I don't want to hear about that shit. Move up my face. Uh, you may she feel al- differently about it. I don't she, like it. She also said for context, this was years ago, and I'm a believer that we all have space to grow, specific, especially from our college-level maturity. We live in a world where these exchanges happen, and the intersection of race and privilege and lack of accountability all collided with that presser. I agree with you. Um, I know people who know this person who are on my Facebook timeline that are members of my organizations and they all swear by her. Um, I don't know her at all. I, I answered this. I said the same thing you said. Well, why did you say something when he got, I don't know, drafted? <laughs> why didn't you say something while he was at Duke? Why did not you say something when he played 15 years in the NBA? Why didn't you say something when he got the job at ABC ESPN, Disney. Why didn't you say something? I, why didn't you say? Why would you wait till now? I agree with you on that. Does it make it not true? I didn't say it didn't make it not true. I, I guess the thing does it make it not true? And if and Steve Nash and I mean, Steve Nash, JJ Reddick denies it. Mm-hmm. So that is, you know, he denies it. I figured he would, and I'm sure LeBron James will protect him, <laughs> but. What I mean, what do you th- should the Lakers just ignore it? Yes, you got your okay. coach. You hired him already. We're gonna go back to something that can't be proven. What what facts? What how can you like? What can you show? What what you got recorded? Like what? Like are know. you Vivian I, Viviano Stiviano? Whatever the girl name that recorded Donald Sterling or well, like, I've been watching she, clips she, lately. So yeah, you have I, all I, that. I haven't I haven't seen that. You yet, have but. that? No. Then then what can we? He say, she say, he say he didn't. You say he did. I mean, move on at this point. I mean, has his character been called into question in the last fifteen years? No, I haven't heard anybody said anything wrong about JJ. Well, his, his, his character was called into question when he referred to the freaking history of basketball as bus drivers, janitors, no, no, that's not, no, that's not. That's, that's not, a character that's flaw, not a, bro. That's not a character flaw. That's, that's not, a character flaw. That's how he feels about. The that's older. how he feels. He plays a position where he all he does is shoot the ball and 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 literally just shoots jump shots. He played no defense for a career. JJ Reddick averaged thirty eight points in the seventies. All right, I'm not twenty nine. Uh, yeah, it looked yeah, like he's like back at yeah. Duke. Yeah, he never averaged twenty nine at Duke, so that that would help. That would help. What twenty five? Uh, yeah, I don't even know if he averaged that much. I don't know. I'm not looking at least twenty. At least twenty. I, 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 yeah, probably averaged at least that. I, I don't know what it was. He did four years, right? All right. 
Three years. He did four. Yeah, he did four years. Yeah, he, did, he. Yeah, that's which is why he's been criticized by other media members saying this man, Michael K. from um, Yes Network, said, "Where are we in society where a guy that went to Duke and has an education is a smart guy is dropping f bombs in a press conference?" Man, that's just how some people talk, man. No, it's not. Yes, it is how some. No, people it's talk. not. Then why is he cussing on ABC during during broadcast? That's, that's different. No, it's not. He How was, is it different, Nick? It's a little bit more freer as a bro. It's not different. Have you ever been to a corporate meeting in your life? Well, that 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 that's a corporation, bro. <laughs> You're the representative of the corporation. We've never heard Pat Riley in 35 years drop f bombs on a press conference. I, don't I know. can't remember one. Pat Riley says. So. I haven't heard Eric Spolster do that in 15. It's just a certain level of use some fucking sense. And I'm not trying to sound like Mr. Curmudgeon or um, I'm all hoity-toity. No, I cuss like a freaking sailor. Yeah. I literally, at times when I don't curse, it's because I write shit out <laughs> on a damn prompter to read because I don't want to curse. Mm -hmm. Because I know how much I do. And I've had people message me saying, damn, you're cursing a lot. So I try to not do it, but it's part of my language. This man is an, is, is, is an ABC First take, all this stuff. So he know how to do it when he know how to do it. Obviously, he felt comfortable in that in that situation where he could do it. Yeah, that, that everyone in the room was like, oh, my God. Does he just say that? I guess. Oh, by the way, I, I forgot to mention. We got to go back to it because that's what I wanted to talk about. I'm done with J.J. Redick. Are you? Yeah. All right. Back to the Panthers real quick. I mentioned Stephen A. Smith because he was at the game in game seven. The last time Stephen A. Smith was called to do something that he knows nothing about was the UFC. He cut, they, why ESPN is trying to force him down because he's for a, MMA? Because he's he, a name, and he and he and he brings no viewership for MMA by him being there. Because if because actually people get pissed off who are MMA fans, and when he makes the comments that he makes because of his complete lack of knowledge. It's offensive to people that actually watch these sports. Mm -hmm. Talk about basketball. We know you know basketball. I'm not going to debate that. You know basketball. Cool. You know basketball. You might know a little bit of football. Yeah. You definitely don't know any baseball, and you clearly don't know hockey. When he said that Donald Cerrone quit in a fight in the UFC against Conor McGregor, when he got elbow, shoulder punched to the face like five straight times, and literally got knocked out. A guy like Cowboy, who's never been known to be a quitter, who's taken fights on short notice, it was mad offensive to the MMA community. Mm -hmm. It was. Yep. And it was like, what are you saying? You Like, you show you don't know dick about this sport. Hockey. Connor McDavid was named the Conn Smythe Trophy Award winner, which is, in hockey, it is the MVP of the playoffs. The playoffs. It's not the MVP of the finals. Mm -hmm. It's the MVP of the playoffs. That said... Typically, the Smythe winner is on a winning on the winning team. Yeah. In this case, McDavid gets named Smythe winner. I think he was slightly classless when he didn't come out to accept his trophy because you were named. I don't care if you lost. You get your ass out there. You accept your shit and go back in. It's happened before where other guys have been named and they come out, accept the shit, and walk back it's in. It's tough. It's tough, but you're a professional. It's tough. You're a professional. Tough. You're you're a professional. Every, people before him have done it, and they go out and accept it, and they walk their asses back in. I get it. It's tough. But they're arguing with P.K. Subban on first take, who was a former professional hockey player. He was one of the guys that was doing the ESPN ABC mm -hmm. stuff with Mark Messier and Steve Lee. Mm -hmm. P.K. Subban is explaining to them what it is, and yet they're arguing with him about what they think. What do you think? You don't know dick about hockey. You don't know anything about hockey. I actually agree that I thought Bobrovsky should be named Conn Smythe, not because the Panthers won, but because he was the most dominant. He was dominant in the playoffs. If we're, Again, the playoffs. First round, dominant. Second round, dominant. Third round, dominant. Finals. The first three games, dominant. Game seven, the one that matters, dominant. But when I heard them say on TV, the votes have to be in with 10 minutes to go in the game. In a 2-1 game. So you're like, of course Connor McDavid's going to get it. 
because they're not going to wait to see who won the game. Um, but they're sitting here telling him, but he didn't win. <laughs> but they didn't win. Hey, man, Shannon Sharp did the same thing. Well, they didn't win. This is the game that matters. And then he, he, and then he alluded to the fact that Conor McDavid choked. He choked. Connor McDavid was Caitlin Clark. How did Caitlin Clark get brought into this? You told me that about Angel Reese. Suffocating <laughs> defense. They had people on him all game. He never had a chance to breathe. He was being defended the way Caitlin Clark gets defended. Suffocated. It's not that he choked. He couldn't get away. Like that's like what are we talking about? So he couldn't get away. He 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 did the best he could to say he choked. The man scored four points in game five, four points in game four. Yeah. Is the reason that they were in a game seven, is the reason that they were in the finals, and you say he choked because in game seven he couldn't get the win. I, I have a hard time listening to people that don't know dick about something refer to people as quitters and choke artists. This isn't Scott Norwood missing the field goal in, in 19, whatever, his first Buffalo Bills Super Bowl when they lost 2019 and he missed a basic ass field goal. This is hockey. He didn't have breakaway opportunities. He didn't have, he didn't give me a shot off in game six, but they won 5 1. But he was, Largely suffocated in this game. And if you saw at the end, when there was like a minute to go, mm -hmm. the Edmonton Oilers could, even with six on five, they could barely move. They were exhausted. That, that last 20 seconds when they had the puck, when they had the puck behind the, the net, and he was like, there's only 20 seconds left. They're, it, it, holding, it, the, they're holding the puck. Like, they're not even moving. I don't, I don't know much. But that's, I'm over there back there like, what are we doing? It's, they like they're setting up the play and like they're, trying they're setting up they're setting up a rush, but yeah. he took so long that the guy set up, took so long to set up the rush he because he was so tired. That line played. You know how you you play in football? You play two. You 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 play huddle, play huddle, play huddle, and it can be a two plays and you're on the bench again in, in Canada. Three plays you're on the bench in, in the U.S. in the NFL. These guys play like 45 seconds. And usually they spread it, spread it amongst four lines. Yeah. That first line played ten minutes of the third period. They literally played half the period because they they almost never came off. Whenever there was a a, a stoppage in play, that main line was back on the ice. Whenever they had a chance to, like the amount of energy those guys ex, 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 you know used, they didn't quit. They did the best they could. Like. I, I just have a hard time where someone says, call someone a quitter, yeah. a, 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 a choker. Yeah, if you, I guess if you miss two free throws with a second to go, like John Starks did years ago, you choked. Cool. You choked there. I'm not calling you a choker. You choked there. Yeah. You, you, your nerves got you. Yeah. There were no nerves with Connor McDavid. Did you see how they were peppering Bobrovsky with shots? <laughs> like, like, what, in the third? They were attacking. And I got you got Stephen A. Smith basically referring to this man as a choke artist. I, I, I you know what? Because they try to correlate to the sports that they know. So if a big crazy. time player doesn't like, does it doesn't make big time play in big game, yeah, or like you know, like if say LeBron don't come out in Game Seven and have thirty two points at least, eight assists, eight rebounds. Say that game he has 23 points, five assists, four rebounds. Has LeBron ever choked? Choked. Yes. yes. When did he choke? In Dallas. Why did he choke? What do you mean, why did he choke? Because he wasn't the why? same. Because why, he, no, he why did he choke? He wasn't the same player he was all year. What I mean by why, why did he choke? Why did he was, choke? Because it was. It, the, why? Okay, go ahead. I'm not going to correlate to the Dallas defense. I'm not gonna no, put. No, it wasn't that. It's because he wasn't. He first of all, he looked scared. He looked like he wasn't himself. He wasn't attacking. He wasn't doing all the things that he normally do. That's, Connor McDavid attacked. Huh? Connor McDavid was attacking. Yeah. So he I'm never saying LeBron, LeBron choked. But that's what I'm saying. Like, 
LeBron choked only because he stopped being who he doing was. what LeBron is. Yes. Connor, Mc- if LeBron takes twenty five shots, we say okay. and he misses. He just he just missed. He just missed. Yeah. He didn't choke. He just missed. Yeah. Kobe Bryant was six of twenty four in Game Seven, and they won against Boston in the finals. Run, run our chest. But he was six of twenty four. Did Kobe choke? No. no. He just missed, and that's my problem. LeBron, we think he choked, and I agree with you because he disappeared. Yes. He, he was not competing. Yeah. He just said, I am not here. I'm not even going to try. I took one shot over two fourth quarters, and my team lost leads because I just completely disengaged. Connor McDavid did not disengage. Connor McDavid was doing everything he could. And you got a guy who doesn't know fuck all about hockey saying, yeah, he didn't show up in the big game. What? I I have problems with that. I I have problems with media members. I'm not a hockey expert. I have so much respect for those hockey players because at the end, you see they're jumping up and down on skates. I was so I, nervous. Skates. I was so nervous watching them run to each other on skates and they're doing all the things that they're doing. I'm like, oh, somebody go get slashed. Oh, somebody go get cut. Like they're jumping on skates. They're jumping up and down on skates. I it hurts my calves to jump on sneakers. On blades. On blades that are this thin and, and they're jumping up and down. Like those are basically appendages to their body. And, and at this point. They, 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 they probably sleep with them at some point on their feet. And they get up in the middle of the night, they walk around their house in blades. Because when they were kids, probably. Yeah. Um, I, I just can't, I can't stand that. I listen to guys like Sharp, and I listen to, to, to Stephen A. And, and, they're, and, and P.K. Subban's trying to explain it to them. Like, Connor McDavid broke NHL records in his playoffs. He broke Wayne Gretzky records. If you don't know shit about hockey, you know who Wayne Gretzky is. You know Wayne Gretzky. You know, you Mario know who Lemieux. Wayne Gretzky is. You know Mario Lemieux. Yeah. It's a couple it, players, it, you it, know. It, yeah, you know who those guys are. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because it just pissed me off so much. That's why I mentioned, like, why the fuck is he at the Panthers fucking Edmonton game? Because like, he's why Stephen is he there? Smith. Why is he invited to be on there? Because, why? Because he's Stephen A. Smith. And they oh, think God. The viewership so will come angry. with it. You know, no one watched it. He didn't talk on the. He didn't talk at the game. He wasn't interviewing him at the game. Like he's, it's just it's just corny as fuck to me. Um, stick to what you know. It, it, like I, I, God, oh Lord have mercy. It just bothers me because if you're gonna make comments about a sport that you don't know, at least don't sound like a complete utter buffoon. Because that shit was irritating as all hell. I'm listening to the hockey guy. Tell him why. And look, I'm not saying I don't disagree with. I don't. I'm not saying I don't agree that. Sergei Bobrovsky should have been Conn Smythe winner. Mm-hmm. Sergei Bobrovsky is one of four goalies in NHL history to allow one or less goals in a series clinching game in a playoffs in a, in, a, in a playoff in that one year. He did it in game five versus Tampa, game six versus Boston on the road, game seven in um, against the Rangers, one or less goals. And he did it in, in game seven of the Stanley Cup finals. That is why I would have made him the MVP because in the biggest moments, he was the best player on the on the ice. Not for nothing Connor McDavid didn't do because Connor McDavid was un Connor McDavid is unreal. And if I don't know if you watched any other games, but there was a play he made, I think it was in game five, where he split three Florida Panther defenders. Three. Well, players, because two were defense and one's a forward. He, like, zigzagged with the puck and scores a goal. Or he put a, an assist on it. I don't remember what it was. But I mean, he scored a goal. I think he scored a goal on it. And you're like, how the fuck did he do that? These are pros he's playing against. Yeah. He's amazing. He's amazing. That's all I got in that one. We move on. Have you been watching the U.S. – Olymp- we, we never talk about this. The U.S. Olympic trials are going on for, for um, in Oregon. Yep. And I wanted to do this because people think I'm typically a negative guy. And on certain topics, I am. But I want to give a massive shout out to Shakari Richardson. Okay. Shakari Richardson, three years ago, since it was three years, not four years, since it was 21, when mm-hmm. they did the uh, last Olympics in front of nobody during COVID. 
she got suspended because she got popped for weed. So her time at trials was basically eliminated. So as 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 if she never competed. So she didn't make the Olympic team. And there are people that were mad saying, okay, she still should have been able to make the four by 100 team. That's an opinion. Because, but she didn't have a time from trials, technically. So I had no problem with her being completely left off the team. I think sometimes there are athletes and people in general that need to feel, I don't want to call it the depths of hell. They need to go but through. they need they they need huh they, they need, need to go, go through, through. Yeah. they need to go through it to understand the magnitude and become what they can be. Yeah. And in this case, Shakari Richardson, from that time, after that initially, that first after that, you know, the Olympics, she wasn't doing very well. Her times were elevens, over eleven. Maybe just under eleven, but she was finishing seventh, Le- eighth. Yeah. She was not That's doing it. well. She looked, she looked like you. She was going through some shit. What were you saying? What you say? She looked like you. She running, looked like me running a hundred. If I ran on eleven hundred, bro, I'd be a fast ass time. <laughs> I ain't never run them eleven and a hundred. Crazy. That's fast as hell. Um, but you could see she started to turn it around last year before the world championships and then she started going upward she went here and then it started to come back up and when you she won the world championships and she ran about a month ago that i saw a couple months i think she ran i saw on on beat my they beat my beat my jamaican sprinters uh the Jamaican oh, sprinters oh, are oh, oh, the oh, Jamaican oh. ones are falling off, man. They're getting a little old. We'll see. We don't lose in a little Tell you bit. what, they're not beating her. They're they're not beating her. It's this gonna time. be close. It's gonna she's be been beat, she's been beating them. I mean, she's been dusting them girls at the hundred. At the hundred. I'm not saying the two hundred, because that girl Sharika Jackson is a, still a motherfucker at the two hundred. Yeah. But at the hundred, Shakari Richardson has been been humming. And one of the things that you always see from her is you see that she has that she has an arrogance to her, she has a swag to her, and she gets like you see a lot of races where her hair is long and hanging and and that's like to me that's I don't know why anyone would ever have their hair hanging like it, it it's it's a win thing you know like your hair can hold you back. You never see guys that have like dreadlocks going down to their ass. That would be a problem, probably going, you know, running. You know, it would. There's a wind resistance. Your dreads are in the air. What if a gust of wind comes and grabs the dreads and pulls you back? I don't know. Uh, yeah, does, yeah. They don't. They don't have dreads swimming. That's for damn sure. It it causes a lag. That's different. But air. There's a reason they don't wear baggy clothes. If they're wearing baggy clothes, your shirt's being pulled this way by the wind. Mm-hmm. But she, uh, in the final. Of the Olympic trials, she comes out. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what you're doing. You can see this like no wave into crowds, none of that other bullshit. She didn't. She wasn't. She typically wears a lot of makeup. No makeup, really. Maybe very plain for her. Her hair was tied up in a bun. No hairstyle. Mm-hmm. She still has her nails and her jewelry, but no hairstyle, no makeup. I'm here for fucking business. This is a business trip. She goes out there and runs a 10.71. I, I, I mean, <laughs> she runs a 10.71. She wins the trials. And I know she still has the 200 this week. She'll obviously be on the 4x100 team. And she and and the three women, the three who qualify for the women are Shakari Shakari Richardson. Shakari, by the way, we used to say Shakari is Shakari. Okay. She said what it is. Melissa Jefferson ran a ten eight, and Twanisha Terry ran ran a ten nine eight to finish in third. She went to Miami Northwestern. Yeah. Um, TT Terry. So big shout out to T- Twanisha Terry at a Miami Northwestern. Um, you'll be having lots. Of, you didn't you didn't go there, bro. You can't do that. 
I, I think that's the sign. I don't know. I know the, yeah, they're bulls. They're the bulls. One, it's no, the bulls. New Orleans on, and I don't even know my own. Group. I'm a Sigma. This is our star think, sign. But New Orleans is here. I think the bulls is, I don't know. This The problem was you played. You weren't in the stands. So. Yeah. Um, Twanisha Terry, congratulations to all those women. But Sha'Carri Richardson, kudos to you. You came a long way. You have a lot to be proud of. The United States is going to have a gold medalist in the hundred in the Olympics. I have no doubt about it. And bet, bet you're going to you're so you're going to bet against the country you're born in. My my roots. Bullshit. My roots. Bullshit. We can, we'll bet. No problem. My roots is Akian Southfish. I don't know how anyone eats oxtail. I, it's think freaking, you never, have you had I think it's disgusting. I think it's disgusting. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you some oxtail one day. No, please. I don't eat knuckle meat. It looks like a damn knuckle that it's I'm pulling fucking knuckle. beef off it's of. The tail of an ox. I'm a, I'm a, Why would I eat that? I eat a fucking filet mignon. You I get, like, I don't eat, oh. Rudy, I'm gonna make it for uh, you. And it's gonna be girl, different. I've had I've had it. You haven't had it. I've had it from Jamaicans. No, every Jamaican's not good at cooking oxtail. Some people put ketchup. I've in. been to Dutch. What is that Dutch pot? Whatever place Dutch and four forty one. Dutch pot is. Oh, so they're not good either, right? They're wow. okay. They're not. That oh, you're, you're taking a shot now at your Jamaican brothers and sisters, they're right? Not authentic. Once you become a chain, it's like ah. Uh, yeah. okay. Nothing but Jamaicans are in that motherfucker when I went there. So okay. Really, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm a bring. I don't it. like. I I don't like, bro. I don't like neck bone. I don't, I don't like pig's either. feet. I don't like frog legs. I don't like, I don't like oxtail. But, I like. I don't even like I don't even like chicken all that so much. If I, I make you some oxtail, you ain't gonna taste it at least. I'll taste it and then I'll and that'll be it. But that's right. too much. That's too like. There's too. If I if I gotta deal with bones all around the freaking food, it's a pain in the no, ass. No, it should fall off. It should be nice and tender. It should be like. Then, a, should, then there should be no bones. Then it should just be. It, it should no, fall no, off without touching it's gonna it. Be right? like, it's gonna be like soup. You want the bones? You want a soup? I don't even like soup, man. <laughs> I like steak, bro. All right, we're getting off topic, but I'm gonna bring right. box oxtail. Well, that's it. So. In the men's side. Uh -huh. So, yeah, kudos to you, Shakari. You're going to bring, bring us a gold, and apparently Nick is going to prove that he's not an American now. Um, Noah Lyles busted 9.83 in 100. Kenny Bednarik at 9.87. Fred Curley at 9.88. I'm going to talk real quick about this kid, Quincy William, Qu Quincy Wilson. 400-meter runner, 16-year-old boy. That's a kid, right? Little, little child. Little guy, he a hundred. He's a hundred and forty pounds. He ran a forty four ninety four in the final. Finished sixth. Mm -hmm. He he's eligible to be in the four by four. He ran a forty four fifty nine in the semi. This kid is he goes to Bullis High School in, outside of D.C. This kid is going to be a world record holder in four years. That's crazy. To compete the way he competed. He, what he said, I'm not even a grown man. I'm running against he, grown men. You see how skinny that little boy was? <laughs> said, yeah, boy. I, man, can't, I haven't weighed 140 pounds since I was like 10. He said, I can't, 12. Feel, I can't feel bad. I'm running against grown men with grown muscles who are developed. <laughs> I'm not developed. I'm probably puberty still touching them and shit. You know? Bro, with the way he ran. That kid is going to be unbelievable. Presuming he stays healthy, there's no injuries. That kid, holy shit. What does he have to be upset about? You finished six in the United States of America. As a 16, Not high school. As 16 year old. As a 16 year old kid racing 32 year olds. In their prime. Bro. Their body. And there was, another, there was another kid from high school um, that was in the 100 who finished in fifth. Mm. Which leads me to where I'm going with this one. Nick has the audacity, unmitigated gall, as I'm going to use for Stephen A. Smith. I've been waiting for this one. I want Nick to say to the world what he said to me. And I'm going to tell you already, so he's going to have to back it up now. Nick told me in a text message that he could break a 9 9 in his heyday. No problem. Just show up. No, that's not what and I said. I want you to. I have it on text. That's not what it. I said. I, 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 I will screenshot that. I put said, the text up. All I said was in my heyday, I believe I could crank under. A, I could crank around a that's, nine. No, I, be, I believe. I could crank One, under a nine nine. Around I believe. I, I really wanted to say ten, 
but I was feeling myself that day. So I said, nine, nine. I think I could have did it in my head. Bit. Granted, guys, you'll have to listen to this. I ran in my fastest time. I ran in the 40 was a 409. I was fat. I was, who timed it? My, my, my trainer, who's a hater. Laser? No, Laser? No, 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 no. My trainer, who's a hater, it's a clock. But my trainer, who's a player hater, my biggest hater, is not giving me anything that I didn't do. So we could call him right now. He's like, hey, yeah, he did it. Uh, that more. But I was really, really, really fast. I ran against Olympic sprinters that I, that probably, they ran a 400, but I dusted them. I ran against track player people. Oh, let's race Nick 100 yards this, at that time. I never lost the race, guys, also. So, Yes. What year? What year? What year? What year? What is? What was your heyday? So I'm gonna say around 25, 26 years old. When was this? When when was this race against your friend, who's the Trinidadian sprinter, who you thought ran the hundred, but he ran the four hundred? Whatever. And so his hundred may have been a ten nine, and you dusted him. So he means you ran a ten three, ten four. Okay. Still very fast. So now my point was the nine nine has been done by like. 15 or 20 guys well, I'll, I'll, in the history of the world. Under 10. Give me under 10. But also, I... Of I, the world! I mean, first of all, I didn't say just go out there nakedly and sprint. Give me a little bit of training. I'm saying give me six months. A little a, a, a little bit of training? Get my a little bit. Let me work on coming out the blocks. Everything else. And, and Rudy makes it seem like like sprinting is the... The hardest thing to to to, to do it. It's either you got tell, it. Tell, tell them how you really feel. Tell them how you really. Feel. It's either you, you go. got it or go. you don't. That's probably the easiest sport to train for. You work on your hamstring. You work on your start. You work on going through the. the, the it's a hundred yard sprint. I'm not talking about a four hundred or or two hundred where you need to be more strategic and, and you need to be able to finish strong or you need to have more power to get through 100 yards of a sprint 100, so first, 100, first, 109 so 109 point it's 100 meters it's 100, yeah, it's 100 meters. meters which is 109 point blah 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 nine yards whatever that's something i could that's a football field i done scored touchdowns and ran 100 yards 110 yards that's what the cfl field is i run that all the time i'm comfortable in that so i think i can do that yes i do believe that Guys, I was no slouch when it comes to running and sprinting. I was one of the fastest people. But you've never run track. But you've never run track. Because they didn't have a goal post. If you're not going to have a goal post or something for me to run to or a basketball hoop, I, I, that's just not what I wanted who, to do. Who, 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 was, who, guided, who guided you, Nick? Who what? Who guided you? Who guided me what? Who was your mentor? In what? In life. In life. What male, men, what male mentor guided you towards basketball and football um because they should be slapped i didn't have a mentor if you think you're if you, if you think that you're that damn fast no i the fact they didn't guide you to track they should i should i you know i should they should all be fired you know and, I, and you know committed I, to a mental facility you know what i should have not there? guiding you to a track and a track. i should have did 60 meters i should at least did started there when when because i was when i was running you, and after the vikings released me i probably should have went and ran 60 meters, but I love sports. I love the competition of football. I love the competition of basketball. Says, I know, I, I'm just saying, but that- Noah, Ly Noah Lyles was won the trials at 983. Yeah. He is the fastest American but he was, right now. He also slowed it down and probably could have ran a 96. Well, he, that was actually the fastest time he's ever run was 983. But he, um, but, but you- Sorry, 980. He ran a 980 in the, in the semis. But he cruised, was, he cruised into it. No, he didn't cruise in the semis. He didn't cruise in the semis. I watched the race. He didn't cruise in the semis. A little bit at the end. Yeah. Uh, Nine eight, it was the fastest time he's ever run. Rudy, the I'm world just... record is nine point five nine. With my start, with Usain Bolt, with my start, and I don't know what your start is. You never run track. With my start as a sprinter, I know what I was capable of. Rudy's gonna say no, Nick, you can't do it. But I'm gonna say at least, all right, I'm gonna be realistic. A a, t a ten or a, like slightly under a ten. I said a ten five. No, and no. I think that would be you're, incredibly you're, fast. You're, you're on crack. If you think I'm, I'm going to get a 10-5. Well, I'm going to make a bet right now, folks. I bet Nick he cannot run a 10-5 on a track right now. So On a track so, right so, now. So because, he still, because, folks, he still claims a 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> he claimed a, week, a, a month, few months ago a 4-3 in the 40. Now it's now he's moved it to 4-4-5. Four, four, this yeah, is on private so I'm not training. 
This is behind oh, the scenes. So y'all also have to understand. I'm talking about guys that have trained their whole lives. And you said in six months, I can be faster than all y'all. No, I said with proper training at that time at my height of my speed. With six months, they're training their entire lives. We're, and what you just did was Austin about, Rivers. We're talking you just about, Austin Rivers no, we're, trapped. We're talking about because we're sprinting. It's not more. It's, you don't need that much strategies and, and, and training like. You're, you're working on your stuff. Did you watch the, did you watch the you, final? Is either you got it or you don't when it comes to Let me ask you, did you, you watch the final? You, it, it's, you, would, you, you were probably, no matter how hard you train, Rudy, you'll probably never be able oh, to. Oh, now you want to diss me? No, 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 I'm, I was no I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to diss uh, you. Uh -huh. I'm not dissing you. I'm just saying certain people, no matter what, they already have it. So what they're doing is maximizing what they already get to get to their. You think you can maximum. maximize your best your speed in six months? Because I was already because I was already fast. But I you was never ran elite level yeah. fast. So all I have to do is work on my start, get a little bit stronger to finish through on that hundred, so I don't slow up and make it through a hundred and hundred meters. Christian Coleman just did not qualify. I'm just saying this is the easiest sport to train. Okay. 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 To Again, train Christian. for like because you're not. The skills wise of it is different than basketball and football or hockey or even baseball. The skill wise of being able to just run what you've been doing since you were fucking two years old, you're running. It's something that's easier to do. It's, it's just realistic. Christian Coleman just failed to qualify in the I get what you're saying. Christian Coleman, did you watch the final? Yes. With Noah Lyles? Yes. Who was winning at the midway point? Coleman, wasn't it? Wasn't he? What happened? Why didn't he, he win? He didn't could have, could have finish. What? Why didn't he win though? He, it's so easy. he didn't have the power to finish through. Everybody else. He, he, he runs. He's run nine eight. He ran a nine eight six in the he semi. Might have got tired, fatigue. Why do you get tired? He, it's it's only running for a hundred meters. Certain days, some certain days you got it more than certain other days. It's just realistic. Just oh oh. So now we're adjusting. So sir? so 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 today. If I, we go out there, you might run an 11-3. In my heyday, no way. No, no. Today? Today, maybe. I'm not just heyday. Train for six so months. Think about, I'll give you six months I'm of training. We can make this better. Who do you going to think I'm arrogant and shit towards? I'm, I'm, You're mad arrogant. You just no, disrespected the world-class track stars. No, I, I could go on a nine, a sub, not a nine-nine, a sub nine-nine. So that means nine-eight. A time that's been run by maybe 20 people in the history of the world. Like that's all I'm saying. You didn't. You didn't like give a real like a Tyree Kill ran a ten one nine, and you think Tyree Kill is fast? I'm sure. Yeah. I know I sent you the. I, I know I sent you the DK Metcalf video. I would be where DK. you said, "Oh, I'm faster than him." Okay. I would have been DK. Uh, He's 27 years old right now. He's not 35. I would have been. Um, DK. I'm, I'm not talking about me I'm, now. I'm okay. talking about me when I was. Fine. Fine. When you were a blur. Yeah. When you were a blur. DK Great. couldn't see me. Tyree Kill is still a blur. Yeah. Tyree Kill ran a ten one nine when he was in high school. Yeah, so if Tyreek okay. trains, and he's never run, and he's never run faster since then. So if Tyreek trains, he's gone back and he's run, and he's never yeah, he, run faster than. I don't think Tyreek trained right. though. Oh, okay, again, why didn't? He, because and, getting faster than ten one nine is fucking hard. And, and me and Tyreek forties are similar. So if we, if I train yes, and Tyreek trained. But he trained for track for his high school career. My four two seven was a slow day. Nick, running a fucking not a sub nine nine is blazing fast. I, I understand that, and you keep and, and you made it sound so easy for guys that have been doing that for a decade. But most and you say people... in six months, you're like the fucking dickhead like Jake Paul who says I'm gonna go train MMA for six months and I'm gonna get in a cage and, I, and I'm gonna go fucking take these guys out in MMA. The fuck you're not. They're gonna take you down, choke you out, and put you to sleep in thirty fucking seconds, Jake. But or Ryan but, Garcia, who's saying that I, shit now. But I can oh run. My can Jake do MMA? I can run. I can Could run. he box? He can. And he beat boxers. Yeah. He beat MMA guys boxing. But you know how long he trained for? It wasn't six months. But but all I'm working on is my start. Finishing right, through. Man. So I, I know. I already know. You, you get, you'll get the needle and you'll give you, inject yourself in the ass and well, clear, I, in the, the all, clear in the cream and that's all, how you'll become faster. I'm a natural world-class athlete. How can you be a world-class sprinter when you never run track? That's the whole point. You keep saying that. You can't be a world-class sprinter if you never actually I'm run the, track. I'm the best unknown to be unknown. 
to what Noah, his... Li- Noah Lyles. He's worse than the NBA, bro. He's basically saying you ain't shit. Isn't that the motherfucker that was talking shit? I'm the best in the world. Yes, not the the UN United States. I'm the best in the world. I mean, like, I, I mean, and I disagree with him because the NBA is the best in the world too, in my opinion. Yes, but but the man's the best individual sprinter in the world right now. We so only thing we'll never be able to prove it. I, the Achilles injury. I I can crank it up. <laughs> no, I can go. I can get, I can get it back going. Look, I. I, I, I <laughs> believe that you probably could run a 10-5. Do I think you could ever run a 9-9? No. Not without, not without legitimately training for years. Yeah, no, not years. Years. Six, not six months. Six months. six months. And your initial text was in my head I could just go do it. No, no, no. I just go do that. it. No, no, no. I said, I, in my I head. I have it here, Nick. In my head. I have head. it here in text. In my you head. Adjusted, you I adjusted believe, 25 texts later. In my head, I believe I could have ran a 9-9. Nine, nine. That's what I said. Right, okay, I'm, I'm now, gonna pull this. What also I'm colors with that now. is me thinking that I'm gonna train, not that just go out there and just. No, nope, but that's not what you said, sir. You cannot run it back. You never elaborated, Rudy. I don't have to elaborate. You're the one that said it. How would I have to elaborate what you said? I gotta elaborate what you said. Yeah. Okay. Track is the easiest sport. I said it. Yep. Yeah. Basketball is harder. Football is harder. Baseball, hockey is harder. Yep. Yeah. If you got it, you got it in track, especially for a sprint like 100 meters. Yes, that's probably the easiest one to do. 200 meters, I give a little bit more respect to. 400 meters, yes, yeah, that takes a little bit more. No, I want to see you, I want to see you run a three minute and 35 second mile. Man, I'm, sure I'm not that doing too, that right? shit. I, maybe when I was in sixth grade and I had endurance for fucking oh, days. Oh, in sixth grade, you could run a, three, you could run a world record you fucking mile time? You don't care. That probably was the best time I could run. Probably sixth, seventh grade. I didn't care about shit. I could just run full speed all day I, long. I, 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 here we go. Uh, let's see here. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this shit out, you know, because you adjusted. I know, I know is your word. In my heyday, I could have cranked under 9.9. Not, I think, I know. Subjective. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Nick Taylor. <laughs> the proclaimed fastest man in my heyday. Hey, now what do you consider my heyday? Hey, Whenever you say it is. Whenever I say it was. And whoever the fuck was your damn mentor and didn't have you on the track between twenty four is a fucking idiot. Before twenty <laughs> between twenty four and twenty six, see me. I don't care. They should have had you on the track in high school. And you should have been no, running no, track. I, I, I don't like you'd be, you'd, you'd be you'd be a multimillionaire right I, now if I, you're as fast as you I say made, you are. I made a mistake, but I don't like running for no reason. I I need a goalpost. I need I need a the zone. goalpost is still there. I, I need mean, the end zone. I need an end zone. I need it's still there. You're just outside of the I field. I need a ball. I need a, a you know the have a damn person hold the ball to the side of the damn thing and pick it up at the end. I was gonna say I need to play with some balls. I, that's yeah. you, you. I mean, you probably like playing with balls. I don't know. I'm hoping it's just yours. Uh, <laughs> just mine. Anyhow, that's I, I'll, 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 I'm done harassing you on that one. But yeah, we were gonna bring that one up for okay. sure. I got nothing left. I don't think I had anything left to talk about because you said see, we have a couple of new segments that we're popping off. Um, Nick is going to be doing a CFL show, um, and I might be there. I might not because I don't really know a lot about CFL. I don't claim to be experts like Stephen A. Smith um, and talk about whatever the waggle is, and that's what it's called, right? It's the waggle. They come in motion. When they run forward, all five, forward is good. all five motion guys can move. Well, six if you can move yeah. the running back yeah. can move. So. So um, the two yeah, outside I, I, guys I, I have to go I, left and right. They can stay on the line of scrimmage, and then everybody else uh-huh. can come at from mm-hmm. five, ten yards behind, as long as they're not off sides, and they go on a cadence. And when the quarterback say height, right at the line of scrimmage at that time, then it's all good. So he's going to be popping off on a CFL show for us, uh, separate of the actual full podcast. I did an interview with. Uh, uh, BKFC 145 champion, the featherweight champion of the world for BKFC, King Kai Stewart. He actually won his, defended his belt on Friday, last Friday at the Hard Rock Live in, in Hollywood against Brian El Gallo Duran, who's a monster of a fighter. You know, I uh, talked to Kai for over 30 minutes. Real, real great guy. Very thankful to him because Fire he is our interview, first. guys. Y'all check it out. That interview yeah. was good. Um, they they went into the fight. What happened pre, the pre-fight you know, knocking off the glasses. It was it was real good. And he still got some bruises from the fight. And it's a it was week. five it was five days ago. It was it was a week ago, yeah. It right? was Friday. Yeah, it was five okay, days exactly. ago. 
No, they were busted up. Like both those guys had some welts. Like, yeah, but it was fun. I mean, it's, 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 for him to respond that quickly and jump on with us, you know, without us ever having done an interview with an, uh, an MMA or BKFC or a boxer or anything like that. That was dope of him, and we really appreciate yes, that definitely. because that was a fire interview. So please do go check it out. It's on. The, it's already up on our YouTube channel. Um, make like it, comment on it. Go check out his Instagram page. It's Kai K and follow him on K A I H B one four five. That's K A I H B one four five. Um, and we're gonna be doing a lot more of these interviews with uh, for Combat Corner because it. You know, I like talking to myself, but I also like talking um, to you know. I like talking to people and hearing what they got to say and asking them questions because MMA, BKFC, all this stuff is, it, to me, it's, this guy didn't know how to box three years ago. Like, he didn't know how to box. And he's the champion of the world at 45 in three years. He's 45? He a, 145 pounds. Oh. He's 20, no, he's 20, no, he's 24 years old. He's 24. But three years ago, he didn't know how to box. Like, he was a wrestler. Yeah. He, he wrestled in high school, was a state champion wrestler in Montana. He wrestled a bit in college. He was in college, and then they called him, and he he was fighting for a belt in his home in his home state a couple of years ago. Won the belt, defended it, and now defended it again. Well, I think he won it last year. Actually, been in the last year, but yeah, I mean he's six and zero. Oh. You know, just great dude. Check it out. You know, like and comment on it. And we are. Um, we are doing a Patreon channel, as we mentioned before, where we're going to be doing exclusive content that we can't post on YouTube because of YouTube's copyright restrictions. Um, I did the analyze the game, analyzing the game um, because of the Caitlin Clark Angel Reese, which we need to talk about before we go because I know Nick wants to talk about that. But uh, analyzing the game is a is basically we're going to analyze games and take a look at them. It's not going to be as I don't remember when Kobe Bryant and Daniel Cormier and all those guys were doing that thing on ESPN. Yeah. If you remember they analyzed yeah. it where it was like, there's no, it was just like kind of very quiet, <laughs> no noise. I enjoy it to a point, but it was tough for me to watch. So I'm, I'm going to try to make it more entertaining um, and conversational. Even if I'm just talking to myself, I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, but overall, yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's something that we want to do, but we can't post it on YouTube because they have copyright rules that, you know, it it chopped my 32-minute video down to 14 minutes, which is up right now. And check it out. But we have the full one on our Patreon on Patreon channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to post a teaser-type video here, and the real one will be on Patreon. And Nick will probably do that for football um, from a cornerback perspective. But uh, Nick, you wanted to talk about Angel Reese. What do you want to say? So first and foremost, I want to give kudos to Angel mm -hmm. Reese. We have been right. Rudy has been riding her. And she deserved some credit for going out there and guiding her team to a win in a game where a lot of people watched and paid attention to. And they were down and getting their butt kicked. And she kept the same energy. My whole thing with her was about keeping the same energy. You know, even on the court, off the court, when you're winning, when you're down, when the refs does not give you the calls that you like, when people are sexualizing you, even though you're wearing certain clothes that makes you become sexualized. Keep the same energy. I love the rah-rah. Um, I, you know, so you're making layups, you're finishing around the basket, and that was a big thing for us. But now you're firmly in the rookie of the year com conversation. Rudy probably doesn't agree, but she has eight double doubles. A lot of them is her own offensive rebounds, but she's a dog on the offensive. Re she's just as magnificent offensive rebounding as Caitlin Clark is passing. That's what she brings to the game. Her motor is high. High, high, high. She never stops. When that shot goes up, she don't care who's there. She's a dog. She's going at it. She's throwing people out the way. So I just wanted to give her credit, you know, because we do talk a lot of shit about her. We thought that Rudy thought that she wasn't even going to make a roster. And I thought that she would still make a roster and she'll be okay in the WNBA. But she 
far surpassed my expectations of what I thought she was going to be. So I am going to give her a shout out. She's, you know, she's scoring the ball a lot more now. Um, and she's leading this team and maybe they might get the eight seed over Caitlin Clark team. Um, I prefer to see Caitlin Clark. I'd rather see her in her offensive game because it's exciting to me. It's exciting to most men that watch this league who have perspective of basketball, you know, of seeing interesting deep shots that kind of resembles a certain player in the NBA um, compared to a lot of missed layups and flailing and uncoordinated type things sometimes. But um, she has narrowed a gap on the rookie. She, I don't think she caught Caitlin Clark, but she's narrowed a gap. Um, so shout out to her. Um, shout out in that game. But Christy Sides, she needs to be freaking fired. What was Iowa coach name? We don't know. Lisa, Lisa Bluter. She just retired from so Iowa. Bring her. She's no longer. Maybe that was a setup to get her over here to coach Indiana because Caitlin Clark needs, needs to be let off the leash. I know Angel Reese says she's a dog, but Caitlin Clark needs to be let off the leash because that's going to open up so much more things for this Indiana Fever team. Um, when she starts shooting the way she does and she's really – you know, has the whole control of the game and she could do what she wants. And the rest of her team, all they have to do is run up the court because she's the most unselfish superstar. She's gonna, she's looking to make passes. She wants to get people layups and easy scores. All you have to do is run. All you have to do is run. And she's going to find you. But when that ball gets to the half-court offense, let's get her some good screens. I don't know if it's between Caitlin not running, you know, setting up the screens better or her teammates are not setting better screens for her, but it's just terrible sometimes to watch their offense in the half court offense. Um, but we're here to see her. It's exciting. Then she's shown and she's proven that she can score the ball and, and do all the things that's needed to be done. But if she gets the ball and they let her do what she has to do, everybody game's going to open up. Her and Aaliyah Boston has become a spectacular little duo of finding getting her easy layups. And I know Aaliyah's like, damn, I understand what number 45 was getting layups by just running the court, setting screens and diving, because she's always looking for it. And Aaliyah Boston should have definitely dived on that pick and roll on that last play. And guess what? Caitlin Clark would have did a little wraparound pass that she's getting in trouble for. But a lot of times people are coming to steal it, but nobody's going to steal it on that time, especially if Aaliyah Boston dives to the basket hard. Nobody's going to get in front of that big body. And then she has a layup, but she gets fouled, and then she goes to the line, she hits one or two free throws, game over. But they have to play more to Caitlin Clark's style. Caitlin Clark, she's, she's the leader of the team. She's the leader of the score. She's the leader. No matter what, how many shots Mitchell gets up and, and do it, and she's the black hole. And, you know, sometimes that's good. That's like, remember when LeBron played with – no, that's not LeBron. Was it LeBron? He played with a couple players. Was it Larry Hughes and, and all those guys? And they weren't really understanding that LeBron should be having the ball as much as he should. And they kind of, you know, he passed it and he didn't really get it back sometimes. And that's what I feel is happening with Caitlin Clark. And it's, the main culprit is Mitchell. When she gets the ball, she doesn't give it back to Caitlin Clark. But Caitlin Clark should definitely be getting the ball. But Caitlin and, 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 and Mitchell – you know, she doesn't pass the ball back. But Caitlin gets in sometimes where she, I don't know, she feel like she don't want to step on toes or she don't want to come in and just be that, you know, that guy sometimes or that lady who is the motherfucker. And she passes the ball and she goes, stands in the corner. And it could be because, you know, well, the space is going to be different. I should be able to score four on four because it's so much more space because my guy is going to be, my person who's guarding me is going to be hugged up on me. But, no, she needs to get the ball. She needs to direct traffic. She she needs to go back into the pick and roll more and and do what they were doing the whole time. So when they do get in the half-court offense, run the pick and roll. Do it multiple times until you get the, like, the, the shot you like, the look you like, or the other people open to shoot open threes and, and layups, and you go from there. But um, I don't know how I got to Caitlin Clark because she's that damn good. But Angel Reese, I just wanted to give a shot at her. It was an amazing game. It was fun to watch. Um, But this is what we're here to see. 
put both of them on the Olympic team. I don't care. I'm at that point where put Angel Reese on the Olympic team, put Caitlin Clark on the Olympic team, the 11th and 12th spot. They can make room, make room. Get these ladies on the team. They're up and coming. This is what we want to see. Put them on the roster. Most of the games are going to be blowed out anyway. They can play 15 minutes. And they are proving that they're both good enough. Nobody rebounds like Angel Reese. Nobody offensive rebounds like Angel Reese. And nobody could pass the ball like Caitlin Clark. I don't care who has more assists because Caitlin Clark probably should be leading the league with nine assists, ten assists. That game, she should have had 18 assists by the third quarter. Drop passes, drop passes. Miss, oh, my God, the girl threw the ball under the rim, and she's left-handed. She got a dime pass that not most NBA players can't make. It was amazing to see. And the girl threw the ball under the rim from the left side. Somebody like, she's had to speed up for to get the ball. I say, no, <laughs> what? y'all cut it out. She sped up because she adjusted to the timing and pace of the ball. But if she wasn't out of control, she became out of control because she just flung it up. And then she, and then Caitlin Clark passes the ball up on the other play because she's just so damn nice. They get a mad scramble for the ball. She picks it up and she kicks it to the other girl who's goes over there and she does this reverse layup under the basket. And I'm like, Caitlin Clark, hold the ball and make sure y'all get a good one. Or the girl, you see, you don't got nothing. You know, you can't make layups. <laughs> You barely make them when you're open, but you think that you could go do this reverse layup. Come on. Caitlin Clark, I need to be more aggressive. Like, nobody's going to say anything to you because guess what? They'll be out the fucking building. They're not going to get you out the building. Everybody else will go. So they going to have to accept that you're the, the best player on the team, and they got to play around that and get their shots off of you. But you have to be the creator. You have to be the person who controls it and make everything go. And that's all I wanted to say. I'm sorry. It, it wasn't even supposed to go this long. I guess I've been wanting to talk about the game for a while. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, that's Nick's feelings on uh, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. I'm not the only one that speaks these things and says these things. Um, he's mentioning a number of plays that I put on the and, and, and analyzing the game. Um, but oh, hell, I'm going to talk. I, I'll, I'm going to talk now too, real quick, because you, Angel Reese. I said if she went for 25 and 15, I would flat out congratulate her. She balled her ass off, man. She she played hard. She single-handedly won that game for them. She got them back in it. Do I think every foul was a foul? No. I think she got away with a push-off in the back on one of them. I question why Nalissa Smith is guarding her 22 feet from the basket because she's never going to take that shot. Because it became uh, personal. These, exactly. But these are the things that when I'm watching and doing an, an analysis of the game, I'm not looking at it from like, okay, the LeBron, JJ, Reddick podcast, pocket pass, elbows. Th th I'm not doing that. I'm talking about I'm watching the game and I'm watching their pick and roll and I'm watching Aaliyah Boston pop out to the top of the key rather than darting to the basket. The final play of the game, she, has she, she pops out for a 21-footer. If she just goes right to the basket, Caitlin Clark will wrap that, that shit, take another wrap dribble, around, she's been doing. wrap it right around, and it would have been a layup. There was no one there. The one covering in the corner would not have gotten there. Angel Reese would not have gotten there in time. Cardoso was, on the, was double teaming. It would have been a fucking layup. Now, if she makes it or not. We yeah, she misses it, I can't say it, but she's getting a layup attempt. At worst, she's getting a five-footer, and hey, if she gets fouled, who knows, but she's getting a much easier look than, what than she a 21-footer that she put off of the backboard two feet left of the rim. Like, the three-pointer that she hit was a prayer, the possession before that. Like, she's only going to hit that shot once or twice in a 10. Like, we, like she can't shoot. But that those are examples of plays. I mean, the, the Kelsey Mitchell gets a pass and she on a bounce pass and she literally puts a left-handed lip onto the bottom of the backboard. And you're left-handed. <laughs> you got at least get it. Like at left. least if you said you were right-handed, she's a lefty. If at least get it on the rim. If it rolled off the rim and it just it's a left-handed layup. It went under Kelsey the rim. Kelsey Mitchell drops and misses another layup on a backdoor pass from Aaliyah Boston in the last two minutes. Uncontested layup misses the just shoots the ball over the rim. Uh, they call Christy Sides is calling a play for Nalissa Smith 
down two where Nalissa Smith misses, air balls a four-foot layup. But why is that play being called? This is the type of shit. And then they just cut their best defensive player who's been sitting on the bench who should be playing ahead of Erica Wheeler and and Wallace. I mean, Mil- Mitchell's never seen – Wallace is number three. What, Mitchell's never seen a shot she doesn't like. <laughs> she passed the ball to Caitlin Clark three times the entire game. It should be – The entire game. There was a play where Caitlin Clark gave her the ball – on the wing, and Caitlin Clark is to her right on in the corner, wide open, and Kelsey Mitchell takes the shot. But Caitlin's always she looking took, for her. She took, she took a covered shot. Caitlin's wide open for a wide open shot. You're like, like what, are, are you guys playing together? And no. then people will show these videos where Caitlin Clark's like, like this. She made a pass to Erica Wheeler on a fast break, and Wheeler stops 15 feet from the rim and when she a, has a beeline right to the rim for and, a layup. And then she becomes and, and one mixtape. Dribbling the circles. And, and one mixtape dribb- fucking Showtime hot sauce. <laughs> Erica Wheeler's from South Florida, by the way. She played down here in high school. Erica Wheeler plays co- in the WNBA like she thinks she's in high school. You can't dribble in circles. And get shit done. She had a they nice, lost that ga- they, easy uh, mid range shot. You know that she's she's like one of the highest paid players. She's like the highest paid player in the league. Erica Wheeler makes like two hundred fifty grand a year. Hmm. Like, but they have her out. Like, she shouldn't even be on this team. To be honest, they put her out there. They give her the ball. They move Caitlin off the ball, and the entire offense stops. They run the same play like five or six hmm. straight times. They don't run. They're screening. The screening. The women don't hold the screen. And I will also blame I'll also blame Caitlin Clark. Yes. Because she doesn't she doesn't tighten the screen. No. Like edge the screen with the ball. No. She kind of like gaps it too much. Mm-hmm. But they're not even holding the screen. They're moving before she even gets there half the time. Mm-hmm. They don't hold the screen. So, so with the screen roll where you're not diving to the rim, Aaliyah Boston should dive to the rim every fucking time. Yeah. Every time. Because that it, it, that girl is gonna find you. It's been proven. But think, and then there was a play where Aaliyah Boston kicks it out to Nalissa Smith in the corner for a three. No one's guarding her. Hey, ball. This bro, this bra takes the three. She can't shoot. Like, why do you think she's open? Why didn't she take? We're talking about Alyssa four? Smith. Nalissa Smith, yeah. number, the, the big girl. Yeah, yeah, green shoes. Take your take two dribbles in. Make it a ten footer. No one's guarding you. No one was guard. No one was outside the key when she took that shot. They're like, "Take the shot, please." Yeah. Like, we, we we thank you for that. You know, uh, Mitchell d- dropping the pass that hits her right in the hands for an easy layup early on, and then right before the half, Caitlin Clark throws mm-hmm. a pass to her that bounces to her, and she moves out of the way. She would have had a. That's a three point jump shot. I'm not saying she makes it. But she's been making but, it. But 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 it was a wide open a wide open look. She made what? Like four and she of makes five wide months? open shots. She makes wide open shots. You know, she takes a lot of bad contested shots, but she typically makes wide open shots because she's wide open most of the game because they don't guard her. They don't guard her most of the game. You know, but Caitlin Clark she now averages less points for him than Mitchell by the way. Believe it or not. Okay. Because she takes less shots. Yeah. And Christy Sides as a coach is as bad as I've ever seen. Like, she is an example of someone who cannot adjust to what she has. No. She was taught to do something. At least in JJ, what JJ Reddick said was correct. You have to adapt. Of course. You have to adjust to what you have. Yes. The game has evolved. Yeah. You have the best shooter in the world on your team, and you are taking the ball out of her hands you are you have made her so uncomfortable to shoot nick i know we said she has to be aggressive but this is happening because of shit that's going on in that locker room I, I, because of shit that coach has been saying to her saying i want you to get other people involved and she passes up on a 10 foot mid-range shot she passes up like the, a floater well, she naturally she's wide gets, open she naturally gets people involved though so just gotta let them. naturally, naturally. And but I think you can't now it's like certain players. You can't, you like can't let overcoach the... great 
players, you have to let them make their mistakes. You're going to have to accept it. Bro. You're going you're gonna to correct it a little bit. And you say, hey, maybe if we do this and this way, that, that. Everybody don't get coached the same. That's just like. No, for you can't. Anybody in this, I everybody get a trophy world to think that everybody's going to get coached the same. That's just not how it goes. Some players could get coached harder than others. Some people could take it. Some people can't. And some people are better and some people are worse. And you have to deal with that accordingly. And that's just what it is. And all that baby and this and that, she's the best player. Give her the ball. If y'all don't like it and y'all don't find a way to like it, y'all won't be here. It's plain and simple. Put your fucking foot down. Let it be known. She's the peop- She's the reason. And if you want to be a reason with her, make yourself good enough to be here <laughs> along with the main person. Yeah, I, I, I'm at that point where every time I watch another guy's podcast, who does a lot of stuff on Indiana, and it's, it's hilarious watching this guy because he basically crushes Christy's size. Christy's size is horrible. I, I, I can't keep saying it, but I, I got to. She's horrible because you were given gold. And you are turning it into shit. And think about the fact that you said that Kate, Angel Reese has closed the gap on Rookie of the Year. Considering that the, the last game they both played was that game, Caitlin Clark had 17, 13, 6, and 4. Yeah. And we both know that she could have had 20 assists by the yeah. end of the third quarter. If they, if, if Alyssa Smith could catch the ball that was dropped in her hands for a layup that she dropped, if Aaliyah Boston had not missed two point blank uncontested layups, if Wallace had not missed a point black uncontested layup, if Kelsey Mitchell didn't drop three passes for layups, or I'm sorry, throw one into the bottom of the backboard, <laughs> if Katie Lou Samuelson doesn't miss an absolutely uncontested wide open three that she fucking airballed, like, why are you even out there? You're airballing a wide open three? Nick, we don't even see NBA players who can't shoot airball wide open threes. Mm-hmm. It's but something. this is a girl whose entire job is to actually shoot, and all she can do is airball the goddamn freaking. I mean, come on, bro! Like, it, it, it's insane to me. Um, I, 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 I just had enough of it. And even in the, in the in the fourth quarter, she kicked it out to Wallace in the fourth quarter in the corner, wide open. Brick, you put, you put, you Brick. supposed to put Cardo. That was a three in the corner, and put- then you had the one. You're supposed to put Cardosa in a pick and roll every play, like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, and maybe can they play zones in in, in WNBA? I, I have no idea. But then, but then finally, she has that pass to Wallace, and Wallace goes in for that reverse lead. Hold the ball, bring the shit back out. What get are you it to doing? Her. But they, but then they get blessed and get the ball back, and they run a screen roll that has Caitlin Clark moving the wrong direction. Like who, who calls these plays? Like who, who, they could, and then there was one point where Wallace had the ball in last minute, and she throws an entry pass to freaking to Leah Boston, but she's throwing it like straight on to her, and it gets knocked out of bounds because of a horrible. Why won't. does Wallace have the ball? Christy, Christy size won't be there next year. We, oh, she, yeah, no, she's done. But I heard that but, she um, got the job on some. She yeah. didn't really want the job. Type yeah, ish. she didn't want it. They, they should hire Lisa Bluter so they can make Caitlin Clark be the player she can be because this shit's ridiculous. Anyhow, that'll wrap it up for us. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast, and on uh, X at Come On Now Pod. And be f- be sure to subscribe here and hit us up on Patreon. Subscribe, become a member over there. We appreciate everything. Get us to a thousand. Come on now. Thank you for watching Come On Now the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.